here if you're ready. It is now 631. Are you guys ready to do this? I hope you are because I just pushed admit all. <laughs> yes, apologies. Oh, no, put them back. Can you actually do that? Yeah. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Yeah, but can you put people back? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks. We're just letting everyone in and then we will start the meeting. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is the meeting of the Select Board of the Town of Situate. It is Tuesday, April 27th at 6.30 p.m. Um, in response to Governor Baker's declaration of the public health emergency and related emergency act executive order um, from March of 2020, Town of Situate public meetings shall be held remotely until further notice, which sounds like it's gonna be closer sooner than, la or sooner than later. Um, this meeting will be recorded and can be viewed live on uh, Situate Community Television, Facebook Live, and it is um, the recording will be available tomorrow on Channel 9 and through the YouTube Situate Community Television um, service. Uh, if you would like to participate uh, um, through the Zoom, you can find the, when, it, when we ask for public comment, the reactions button on the bottom of your screen will allow you to raise hand and then we will unmute you and recognize you. Um, so with that, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Vignani. Is there a second? Ms. Connolly? Uh, because we are meeting remotely, all votes will be taken by roll call tonight. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. All right. It is 4-0. I will note that we are 4-0 because Ms. Uh, Curran is um, called away unexpectedly to some work requirements and needs to um, attend to that. She is hopeful that she will join us mid-meeting. Uh, so we are four, four, four out of five tonight, which is a quorum. Um, I also want to note that the discussion up here of the community harbor, the harbor community building, as, as we all know, is old Pier 44, will be postponed until our meeting on May 11th. Um, and that's what I have. With that, we will move into uh, zoom-ins or walk-ins. If you'd like to address a board on a matter that is not on the agenda, please um, go to the reactions and raise hand. And we will scroll through and see if we see anyone. I do not see any raised hands without, uh, so uh, with no zoom-ins or walk-ins, I'm gonna take a little, um, privilege and just jump in before Jim reports, um, gives his town administrator's report. Um, on Sunday, uh, this past two days ago, the, um, the um, commemoration of, um, of the Easter Rising was held in the harbor. And I was lucky enough to go to attend and represent the board, but unfortunately not smart enough to remember to bring the proclamation with me. Um, so I did discuss with the committee and we decided that it might be a really um, useful thing for the community who couldn't attend in the rain on Sunday um, to quickly read, it's a quick one, so I will quickly read the proclamation um, so that folks know there's a big monument down by the bandstand and what it's about. So the Easter Rising proclamation is, whereas the Irish Republican Brotherhood led by profession, Professor McNeil had arranged for a parade to be held on Easter Sunday to organize a rebellion, but the parade was officially canceled. A few Irish decided to go ahead with the rising. And whereas in 16, 1916, the morning of April 24th, about 1200 members of the Irish Volunteers and Irish Citizens Army mustered at several locations in central Dublin to occupy a number of buildings selected because of their positions near barracks and major routes to the city. And whereas despite great odds against them, these Irish patriots held out for about a week from the British and whereas after reinforcements arrived, about 1600 rebels were facing almost 2000 British soldiers. And whereas the 1916 rising represented the first major demonstration of force against the Irish United Irishmen rising um, of 1798. And whereas the rising led to the popular support for Irish independence, the town of Sic Situate, that's us, recognizes the 105th anniversary of the Irish rising. So thank you for that moment. This is, uh, um, it was a great event and thank you to everyone that's provided that. Um, and with that, I will now ask James if he would give the town administrator's report. Good evening. Uh, we actually have some new news tonight if people have been paying attention. 
The CDC issued new guidelines relative to wearing a face mask and the governor uh, issued a new order today relaxing the face mask restrictions. So effective on Friday, April 30th, the state's coverings, face coverings order will be relaxed for some outdoor settings. Face coverings will only be required outside in public when it is not possible to socially distance and at other times required by sector specific guidance. Face coverings will still be required at all times in indoor public spaces. Face coverings will also continue to be required at all times at events, whether held in a public space or private home, except for eating or drinking. Uh, please note, Situate goes by the state guidelines, so those now apply as of Friday to Situate. Uh, there are cities and towns that have their own guidelines. They may not have loosened their guidelines. I know Boston is putting off for three weeks. I know Plymouth has a $50 fine for not wearing a face mask. So you should just make sure when you go to another community that you're in compliance with their face mask rules. But that's a big deal. We've been talking about that. So if you're walking in the harbor and there's no one around, you can take your face mask off. If you approach other people, you should just kind of pull it up. But uh, good news with the good weather. So we'll take what we can get. Uh, effective May 10th now, large venues such as indoor and outdoor stadiums, arenas, and ballparks currently open will, will be permitted to go from 12% to 25% capacity. Amusement parks, theme parks, and outdoor water parks will be able to operate at 50% capacity. Uh, youth sports and adult amateur sports tournaments will be allowed for moderate and high risk sports. And singing will also be permitted indoors with strict distancing requirements. Effective May 29th, subject to public health and vaccination data, gathering limits will increase to 200 people indoors and 250 people outdoors for event venues, public settings, and private settings. Street festivals and parades and agricultural festivals at 50% of their previous capacity. Uh, and after submitting plans to local boards of health, that one doesn't make a lot of sense to us because we don't permit the crowd, we only permit the parade. Uh, but Parades will be allowed again. Bars, beer gardens, breweries, wineries, and distilleries, subject to restaurant rules and seated service only, a 90 minute time limit, no dance floors, and subject to public health and vaccination data. The restaurant guidance will be updated to eliminate the requirement that food be served with alcohol and to increase the maximum table size to 10. And then on effective August 1st, subject again to public health and vaccination data, uh, we will basically be lifting the restrictions and opening up uh, with 100% capacity with best practice guidance. So those are all good news if the numbers keep trending in the right direction. Uh, in Situate, they are trending in the right direction right now. We had uh, 20 new cases in Situate, down from 35 the previous week. We are still in the yellow. Our positivity rating was 3.04, down slightly from 3.29. Marshfield and Cohasset have both gone into the green while we were in the yellow, but again, we are trending in the right direction. State positivity rating yesterday for the past seven days was 1.74, and that was down from 2.04 the previous week. And that's the first time in about six months that the state number has been below 1.75%. So that's very good. Uh, we'll see if based upon people traveling for vacation, those numbers tick up, but right now we are moving in the right direction. Um, everybody in the Commonwealth over the age of 16 is now eligible to be vaccinated. You can go to the mass vac sites or you can go to the individual sites, which is easier. If you pre-register at the mass vaccination site, that does not stop you from going to CVS or some other place and registering and getting a shot sooner. If you do, when you get the notification from the mass vaccination site, you just decline the appointment and you go where your CVS or wherever else you got it. So that's a good thing. The one caveat, 16 and 17 year olds, uh, if you are signing them up to get a vaccine, they must go to a place that has the Pfizer vaccine. The Moderna vaccine has not yet been cleared for people under the age of 18. So if you're taking your kids, 16 and 17 year olds, uh, they need to go to a place with a Pfizer vaccine in order to get vaccinated. Uh, the board's talked about it a couple of times, but we are opening up for internships for the selectmen, uh, the charter review committee and other people who might need help. We have a bunch of different projects, so you should get in touch with us. It's on the website. Uh, Andrew made a very nice video that we put up. So uh, go take a look and let us know. We'll be glad to hear from you. I'm gonna skip over a lot of the updates from the um, projects are the same, they're all ongoing. We hope to finish both Cedar Point and the Marina in the very near future, but those are on schedule. Uh, we finished flushing most of the water mains in towns. We're slowing that down now. We are doing some around Seaside at Situate this week. 
And as I mentioned previously, we will be doing in the area of the Jenkins School, but that'll be nighttime flushing. So it's not to impact operations at the school. Uh, the contractors for the water main projects will be starting on Monday. You will see them around town this week doing some setup and some prep work, but they'll be out there Monday. Those neighborhoods should have been notified that the work is about to commence and what is going on. The reservoir, it's three plus inches spilling over. We want to remind people that the annual state imposed water restrictions for situate go into effect on May 1st. All watering must be done between 5 p.m. and 9 a.m. And in-ground irrigation is limited to one day per week based upon your voting precinct. And that's what I have for today. I was doing Zoom protocol and put my Zoom my uh, mute on. Um, does anyone have any questions for our town administrator, Ms. Connolly? I do. Um, Jim, when you say that water restrictions are state mandated, does that mean every single town in the state has to follow the same restrictions? Because I oh, had the impression. The restrictions are based upon each community and each um, dry area, each watershed area. So, but these are state restrictions. They're not based upon any water usage or any level in the reservoir. It's May 1st, we have to put these restrictions on. But it doesn't apply, for example, to, Mar to um, Marshfield or Norwell or? Well, it doesn't, it actually does in Norwell, but Marshfield has a different water supply than we do. So it's so based it depends, on? Depends okay. upon what watershed you're in and what your drawer is and um, what the strain on that watershed is, so. So we're not in the same watershed, for example, as Cohasset? I'm not sure where Cohasset gets their water from, but they are not, uh, they seem to have plenty of water. But yeah. I think they have a bigger reservoir than we do also. Yeah, okay. And one other unrelated question, since you're standing or you've got that nice picture in back of you, I think the natives are getting restless about being able to get into the senior center. Uh, do we have any idea based on the governor lifting at least some of the indoor restrictions as to when we might be able to have people in the senior center? Well, I've, I've said the last couple of weeks, you can go to the senior center if you like. It is open, the staff is there. We prefer at this point that you make an appointment uh, just to make sure that we don't get to a point where we're exceeding the limits of people that can be in there, but the center is open. Uh, you can go, we're not doing the food service yet. Obviously that's not set up, but the building is open. People are allowed to go to the, visit the building. You'll have the mask requirements. And I know the staff is preparing uh, to start doing programming again based upon the current guidelines. So right. remind us, there is a tentative date for the technical grand opening. It's sort of a soft opening now. I think, uh, I think May 13th will be a, is a tentative date for a ribbon cutting, correct? Yeah. So it's, it seems as though that people shouldn't anticipate anything beyond appointments at this point. So we don't have any programming going on yet. That's correct. They're still getting the program up and running based upon the current guidelines. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep everyone posted. Thank you. Um, are there other questions, Mr. Vignani? Jim, the um, the uh, bylaw that we passed at town meeting for the um, fines on the um, water usage, do they go in effect now or are they go in effect July 1st? I think actually, Tony, they probably have to go to the uh, attorney general. So we'll have to wait for those to come back. And then when they come back, they'll go right into effect. Okay, so it, it's based on the attorney general, not on the fiscal year. Yeah, we would, we would say those are already in effect, yeah. Thanks. Great. Are there any other questions for the town administrator? All right. Uh, thank you, Jim, for your report. Um, and that will lead us into our next item, which is the first scheduled item. And uh, Chief Thompson has joined us. The, the man of the hour, Officer Arthur Wood, unfortunately has um, another commitment tonight and can't join us, but... Um, we're happy to recognize his long service to town. And I will, I just personally want to note that um, Officer Wood was probably the first face of the Situate Police Department that my children many, many moons ago knew and got to recognize because he's the one that told them how to put their helmet on and not cross the street. And, and he was just, a, just a wonderful, wonderful in that role. But I will uh, turn it over to Chief Thompson and you can um, tell us about his 35 years of service, which we are recognizing this evening. Good evening, thank you. And uh, that's, a, that's a great segue as I was 
going through uh, Officer Wood's personnel jacket this afternoon, kind of going back and looking at things and trying to get a couple of dates and whatnot, um, it really struck me kind of the history that he's had over the past 35 years. Um, and as you go through the jacket, there are all these letters from either past town administrators or board of selectmen or community members or things that really just highlight all the incredible work that he's done um, in the lives that he's touched. I mean, uh, Officer Wood started in uh, April 86. He graduated from Plymouth Police Academy, um, spent a number of years on patrol um, in varied midnight shift, day shift and things, um, but ultimately became the department's uh, safety officer. Um, and this was at a time before school resource officers existed, but he was embedded very heavily with the schools, um, but also worked with the senior community. Um, and really his role was ensuring that the people of Situate, uh, whether they be residents or visitors were, were taken care of and really promoted safety. Um, and I think that that's just, it's like I said, it's unbelievable when you look and you think of all the lives that he's touched um, and the, the children over the course of time that like you said, it's bike safety, it was train safety, it was ice safety pedestrian safety, all these different things where his role was out there promoting and trying to educate people as far as how to be safe. So um, that I think is really just an unbelievable thing. And, and like I said, it was really, it was enjoyable to go back and read comments and personal handwritten notes from people over the years with the impact that he had. Um, beyond that too, he's done so much with volunteering in the community, whether it was the senior dinner at Christmas time or uh, safety day or things with the council on aging or the citizens police academy there's this list and i could i could probably just keep going on and on about all the different things that were there but um truly is incredible um when you really look at this and i, I think that those comments those letters that are there all the things that he has done over the years are really a testament to his dedication um, and selflessness towards the community so uh, it's unfortunate that he's not here tonight um, but really 35 years is an unbelievable achievement. He's still going strong. I know you'll see out there, probably if you've gone out to the lighthouse at all over the course of the past several months, you'll see him out there. He's, he, he's doing the details um, and he is very enthusiastic with his detail work and his traffic work, continuing to promote safety. So uh, congratulations to him. And I really appreciate the board taking the opportunity to rec uh, recognize him for those years of service as well. Thank you, Chief. And the, um... The town did did um, uh, uh, purchase a um, a gift to um, to give to him to thank him for his service, which I understand you were charged with presenting to him since we're all in boxes. Exactly. So uh, that that presentation is forthcoming for him. Okay, great. Um, would any of the members of the board like to add any comments about Officer Wood's service? Say, uh, uh, Mr. Vignani, I think, and then Ms. Conley. Yeah, I think Karen's probably going to repeat what I'm going to say. But uh, again, Officer Wood has been with all of our kids through, um, you know, through kindergarten, through through Gates, through high school. So he's been a, a, a stand up um, security figure uh, through their whole lives. And we really appreciate all the work and dedication he's given to the town, as well as all the other stuff that he gives outside of the kids. So I, he's, you always notice him on the roads or wherever he is, because he stands out with his great personality and his high energy. So. Um, thank you very much for your service. Karen, would you like to add? No, I mean, Tony said it, you said it. Anyone who had a kid in situate schools uh, knows who Officer Woods is, and which is, I think is a great thing. So I just want to congratulate him on his amazing amount of service. Thank you. Yeah, we'll make him watch this video so he can hear. <laughs> <laughs> great. Perfect. Perfect. All right, thank you for joining us, uh, Chief Thompson, and please extend the entire board's thanks to uh, Officer Wood. I will, thank you all very much. All right, thank you. Uh, our next item on the agenda, unfor well, fortunately, is a public hearing, but unfortunately, it's 10 minutes away and we are not um, allowed by, um, by all the rules that there are to start a public hearing without um, meeting the, um, the hour. So we have to wait 10 minutes on that. Actually, we have two public hearings back to back. Um, so I am going to do as I've done in the past, because we're so efficient here, is to ask the board if they have any of their liaison reports that we can um, update folks on what's going on with the various committees while we let the clock tick. Um, are there any updates? And we just had town meetings, so a lot happened because of that. 
All right, I'm getting uh, Mr. Goodrich. I'll, I'll go with the, the Water Resource Commission. They had a very successful um, water rain barrel um, event. Some of us even on the board here, hopefully they're installed. I won't, <laughs> I won't point any fingers, but hopefully everything's going well. It's full now. Uh, and also um, be on the lookout for some free uh, Clover giveaway, hopefully at the library, details coming soon. Uh, clover and overseed, drought resistant seed for people's lawns. Uh, just a small little bag, but um, there'll be more details hopefully on the website soon. Um, just again for, uh, for water conservation. So that's my report. Great. And if I can just add, Karen, thank you, Andrew, for standing out there in the, <laughs> in the weather for whatever you were, six hours handing out those big drums. Um, when I picked up mine, they're almost all gone. So it was a really successful event. Excellent. And as I think everyone knows, and I think Jim, no, I'm not actually sure if Jim noted it, on May 1st is our, our return of the Ship Shape Day. Uh, so that's this coming Saturday. You can go down to Town Hall between, I think it's 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. to pick up bags and supplies. Um, and I can't tell you how excited I'm about that because we need to have that and uh, uh, get everybody back out and cleaning up the, uh, the area. We will have a report later tonight from the EDC, so I won't bother to give you their update. Um, and, oh, another very important thing, the board does wish to acknowledge and, um, and, and um, celebrate with our own Nancy Holt, who celebrated a birthday yesterday. So happy birthday. And she'll kill me for calling her out, but <laughs> unlike her, I actually love birthdays. <laughs> oh, look, she's got... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're still seven minutes away. Could I, uh, Mr. Connolly? Well, if we're, if we're talking about Ship Shape Day, um, it's been disturbing that the trash barrels are now at the beaches overflowing. Terrible pictures on Facebook of just, I don't understand it, but you know, to remind everyone, if you take something onto the beach, take it back with you, don't leave it on the ground for someone else to pick up. And I know we've had some problems down at the Situate Arts Association with people dumping things there. That is a town owned property, but uh, the Arts Association maintains it, keeps it up. And to see what has happened down there is also disturbing. So I'm, I'm just, I don't mean to be preachy, but you know, we have a beautiful town. So pick up your trash and don't dump it in someone else's yeah. uh, area. So. Yep, always bring your trash. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, it is now six minutes before. Um, can I have a ruling from our town administrator? Is that too soon to start a uh, public hearing? Yes. Oh, he went away. Sorry. <laughs> have, yes, you have to wait till seven o'clock. We could approve. Uh -huh. We could approve. Discuss the fish fry. Um, I know we could, but I don't know if the um, applicant wants to. Where, what, where are we? Meeting minutes. We could do many minutes. Thank you, Mr. Goodrich, for that wonderful recommendation. Um, is uh, so way at the end of the meeting we approved minutes, which now you're making me to somebody. Now you have to find the, the uh, motion since you thought of it. Ow. <laughs> um, the prior minutes takes a long time to get there. Uh, I've got him. Would you like a motion? Reverend here, because you're right. If he's on, I don't see him. I'll move to accept the meeting minutes for the select board meeting held on April 6th, 2021 and April 12th, 2021. Moved by Mr. Viani, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Goodrich. This is a roll call vote because we are remote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Um, Mr. Viani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Unanimously accept the meeting minutes. Um, I, and on the same line, could we, uh, uh, Ms. There's another, there, there's, there's another minutes we can accept. Oh, I please. Please. Move to accept the meeting minutes for the select board meetings held on March 23rd, 2021 and March 29th, 2021. Oh no, I'm sorry. You know that's what, what that's, said, right? that's yeah. the meeting minutes. That we, never mind. <laughs> we don't need to approve the meeting minutes that we approved, right? Sorry. Yeah. 
Well, you know, we're thorough here. Um, okay. Is there a ton of correspondence? I actually didn't get that far on. I back up was 300 pages. Uh, the only thing I saw, I think, was the Plymouth County Cares. Um, and that was basically that number had not moved. Um, but Nancy, I don't know if you want to mention that there has yeah. been. Yeah, Nancy has an update. Movement. That. Is that on our agenda or can we just mention it as new information? I, I think we can mention. So the, the, the report was, was at, at the time we got it, but we did get new information today, which I don't think there's any reason not to share, is there? No, it's fine. Ms. Con uh, Ms. Holt, would you like to share the good news? Sure. Um, we were advised by the county treasurer that there's going to be a meeting on Thursday of the Plymouth County Commissioners and are likely that claims 21 and 22 will be acted upon and potentially claim 24. Um, just to update the board, we've filed 36 claims. So this would only get us into November. Um, they also, now he also advised that the, they are committed to trying to get through all of the claims by the end of May. So that would be welcome news and a welcome development um, if it does come to pass and we appreciate their hard work towards that. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Goodrich. Just for the for the folks at home, what what's the financial the roughly impact for that for the town? We're waiting on approximately one point two million dollars in claims. Excellent. Okay. I was trying to take a knee. I'm trying to trying to get us there to seven. Okay, I, I, I can report, uh, correspondence. I I can report that. The South Shore Regional School District Committee sent us a letter on April 6th, and I believe that it was approved that um, each member of the towns of the district as to the amount. I, I, did they all vote yet, Jim? Do you know? No. Okay. Well, I think uh, Marshfield voted last night. Okay. Aside from that, it's just us, I believe. Okay. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, great. Well, I'm, I apologize to everybody for twiddling our thumbs, but a public hearing has to be at the appointed hour. Um, and what we will be discussing is an application for on-premise uh, Section 12 all alcohol liquor license for a new restaurant um, on Front Street um, doing businesses Chopstick and Forks. And the uh, when in two minutes when we begin the conversation, um, it will be, this is the space that was formerly occupied by Reba that moved down the street and became Salt Society. So we're looking forward to talking to you. So <laughs> hang with us. One more minute, Mr. Boudreau. Anything else exciting happening? Other than we're nuts to be inside on a gorgeous night like tonight? Well, I could ask Lorraine, does the grant report card count as correspondence? Uh, sure, I think it's a nice thing to uh, yeah. talk about. Yeah, so I will report that the total, I'm not sure this date is correct, from January 1st, 2021 to present day, um, the, the total is $1,076,369 from all grants. And that does not include grants to the schools. Um, and of that amount, COVID related is 315000 $859. So good work on the part of the town. So 700 grand of non COVID grants have re come in since January. Well, that's why I'm saying I think there's a typo on this. I think it must mean no, Nancy's shaking her head. <laughs> it is from January 1st and it does include the 400,000 complete streets uh, that we were just advised of. Right. So that's what's helping it. Oh, oh okay. okay. It, it seemed like a lot in. A short amount of time. Yeah, I like a lot. I know. Awesome. I like a lot too. So right. at any rate, at any plus, we normally wouldn't be getting COVID-related money in other years. So that that brings it up to a more reasonable total. Uh, great. Well, yeah. As you note, know, Ms. Connolly, the amount of work that goes into writing and, and uh, um, acquiring those grants is enormous. So I yes. think does an amazing job at it. The so last thing I'll leave because it is now seven o'clock is I don't, Jim, did you know um, in a prior report about the MSBA um, approval? Have we, I think I, you did in your, in your I, weekly. I don't report. think I have. I know it's on the agenda. Burkhead has on the weekly updates. It's on the, it's not on I the think, agenda. I, I thought it was on our agenda. No. No? 
Cliff Notes. We are in the, we're still in the application phase of uh, participating with state funds. Jim, can you say that more succinctly? Uh, Cliff Notes is we've approved to go to the next step in the process, replacing the, uh, some of the elementary schools. Great, okay. And All right, we have only maybe 17, I think. Yeah. Very few out of, uh, it was over a hundred that were applied, uh, less than, yeah, only about a dozen were moved on. Yeah, there will be much more conversation about that, but we are now at 7.01, so we can begin our public uh, hearing at seven o'clock for the application from Chopsticks and Forks. And I believe we have the attorney and the owner um, if I hopefully, let's see if we can unmute you guys. Um, they should all be co-hosts. They can unmute themselves. Oh, you can unmute yourself. I don't have to Hi, nice to meet you. Same, yeah. Um, so the board has received all of the backup. Hi, in the box down there. Um, we, um, we received all your backup application material about coming into this space, Every all the documentation um, I believe is in order. I don't, I'm sure the board will have some questions, um, but before we go to the questions, I'd like to open it up to you to um, uh, just explain what your intents are for this restaurant and how you're going to contribute to our, our Harbor um, business community. And, and introduce yourselves too, of course. <laughs> yes, I'll start. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Select Board. Um, Chairman of the Select Board. Uh, my name is Mei Hui Hu. I represent the applicant, Front Street Situate LLC. Um, Front Street Situate LLC uh, is 100% uh, owned by Sam Lin. He's also here tonight. He's also the propo uh, proposed manager of the new uh, restaurant operation. Um, there's also another aspect is that Sam also invested in the real estate. Uh, he purchased 116118 Front Street uh, real estate interest in 2019, right before COVID uh, shut down. Um, as you know, last year it's been difficult for restaurant industries. Uh, Riva closed down um, in the beginning of the last year. And uh, as you know, the restaurant currently is vacant, uh, unoccupied. Um, what we are proposing to do is that Sam uh, has some real estate interest in this particular property. He also has uh, quite a bit extensive experience in running restaurant businesses. He has uh, worked in a restaurant, uh, just across the border in Connecticut. It's called um, Meadows, Meadow Asian Cuisine, uh, which also has a full alcohol license. And it's in Connecticut, Simsbury. And it's very similar to the concept we have today that we are proposing. It's a Pan-Asian, uh, Japanese and Chinese fusion restaurant. Uh, we understand that Situate is, is located in a unique, situ, uh, unique place where there are a lot of uh, uh, people enjoy, you know, the, the sunshine and uh, on their way to a, uh, you know, location somewhere visiting or um, vacationing. So we just wanted to offer something that is easy for the patron um, to uh, relax themselves. And uh, certainly we pride ourselves in our menu. Uh, uh, Sam has been a chef for a very long time, so we are confident with the menu we're offering. And the alcohol uh, license we are um, applying for is really just uh, enhance patrons dining experience so that they can enjoy um, their meals and relax, you know, over just uh, a beer with their friends at the end of the you know, vacationing day or a, a, an, an end of a work day. So that's our basic concept. Uh, we understand that um, we are abutting, um, our abutters are there are quite a few residential units. And so we are very conscious about keeping the place clean and also uh, keeping the noise down. Especially we're proposing to not have any outdoor dining after 10 o'clock. Um, 
So just to be, you know, we know we are new going into this place. Uh, Riva was successful, uh, but they left quite a bit of um, um, situation there. Before we open, we need to take care of it and clean up. Uh, and also we understand once we go in, we want to be a good neighbor. Um, we want to contribute to the situate small business uh, community, but we also want to be a good neighbor to the adjacent uh, residential um, uh, uh, neighborhood as well. Um, so that's basically what we are offering. Uh, we're excited about coming into Situate and we're excited to offering our experience and hopefully we will be a good neighbor and good fit for the community. Great, thank you. I will note for the board that um, since we received our backup material a couple of days ago, we have received additional information that revises um, the application um, as has just been described that there will be no, there's no more uh, requests for outdoor entertainment and it was, um, and, and the patio would close at 10. Um, and we did, a, I, think, I think hopefully everyone's had a chance to review the additional information that was provided today. Uh, Mr. Lin, I know that you've had a successful restaurant in Connecticut. So the first question I want to ask you is, as the manager, um, you know, one of the things that's incredibly important to this board is um, just maintaining the integrity of distribution of alcohol to minors and all of that. So if you could tell us a little bit about your experience with, um, you know, supervising that responsibility and also um, are you going to be here? Are you coming from Connecticut or what your intent is? Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sam Ning. So uh, I have a restaurant in Sinsbury, Connecticut right now. We've been there for 13 years. The restaurant in Connecticut, we do have same thing like a river used to be. We have patio out there. And also uh, we serve the alcohol in the patio too. So we have very good relationship with the customer and also neighbors in Sinsbury. So I, I will do the same thing what I did in Meadow in Sinsbury here in Situate. So as a manager, I know that I, I, we, I need to be in the restaurant all the time to manage anything that the restaurants right and also we serve, uh, yeah, and also, uh, okay, I know some people might have some issues, I mean, some people might have some issues with the rivers before, but I, I since I bought a building inside, uh, I didn't hear anything about it because I think river are closed down on uh, two, 2020 uh, on September. So during that time, it's a pandemic. So I don't, I don't hear anything from from owner of the river told me anything about it. But whenever issue what they have before, I want I want they happens in in the restaurant here. I mean, when I open it up. And so your intent is to be the full-time manager on premise. I, I, I will, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I did. I did do a little snooping on you because that's our job, and uh, you are. I you certainly made a good impression on your, the residents of Simsbury, so uh, that speaks very highly of your contribution there. Um, I will. Um, I will ask the board, other board members, are there questions about the applications? There's several applications. Who would like to start in their little box? Ms. Connolly? Yeah, I guess I'm slightly confused about when we talk about the patio. Um, the patio that Riva used was on the side of the building. Is that owned by you now, Mr. Lin? No, it's uh, owned by, uh, owned by, I think it's owned by Steve Warner. We okay. need, we need some, uh patios from them. And that's the one that leads it up to the cottage. between the boutique and the theater. That's yes. owned by Mr. Is that Situate Development? You may not know that, but we did get a letter from the um, the condo people who are they have all kinds of issues related to patios and uh, the um, who owns it, who they need to talk to. I know that you bought the building but the brick surrounding the building on the 
middle of it and then in back of it when you lead up to the theater is situate development and as long as you keep your premises clean i don't understand why the people at situate development aren't keeping their premises clean right uh, miss conley i just want to interject the, i'm sorry mr lynn but the um we did it was a late a late entry to our backup we did receive a copy of the lease of easement for the use okay. of the patio for mr warner um and it does have a couple of, if you'll if you uh, unfortunately we got this late so the board may the board may want to have time to digest this but there's um in that lease there's a responsibility for the tenant to um to uh, not operate after 10 and to you know, do their best to keep the area clean and that sort of thing. It's in their easement lease. That so, is so the, was late. So I, I, I haven't read the whole lease myself because it's come late. So, so the recourse that the neighbors have about the cleanliness of the area is to the, uh, the lessee, in this case, Mr. Lynn, um, the restaurant operator. Right. Um, I don't know, Mr. Lynn. Can you can you answer that question? If if, uh, if folks get upset about the condition, do they come to you? Or do they come to the landlord? Maybe uh, I could I can um, just sure. sort of um, uh, state what we our understandings are. Uh, when River left in September last year, that place is is nobody's responsibility. I mean, no longer um, part of our premises. And uh, it sort of went back to the landlord. And that explains oh. why there may be some neglect uh, that's happening at that, um, say, you know, quote unquote patio. Uh, our intention is to, um, once we have our application go in, even though our lease doesn't go into effect until May, when ABCC hopefully by then approve our application. Uh, even though it's not our responsibility, but we will definitely talk to uh, the landlord for that particular area. I think it's 350 square feet we're talking about uh, to start getting, get going with the cleaning process. And so that it doesn't feel like it's abandoned and nobody's taking care of it. Um, we will definitely work it out with the, uh, the landowner and uh, make sure that going forward, we don't have an eyesore or any kind of unpleasant situation. Uh, so Sam, if you have anything to add, please go ahead. Uh, nope, I, I think that should be, it should be, it should be. Yeah. Well, thank you for clearing that up. Um, are the other, Mr. Goodrich? Yeah, so I guess, I guess mine's a, a comment uh, and a question. I mean, first of all, right on some of the, the snooping to see what type, I mean, uh, 4.7 out of five stars on open table. Uh, service is fabulous, impeccable outdoor dining, absolutely gorgeous. I'm just online reviews, multiple sites, can't wait to go back. Can't get this type of food uh, anywhere else in Connecticut. Came here from Boston. Can't believe how clean uh, and impeccable um, your restaurant's been. So it's, it's clear um, that at least on the folks that we can see that you're doing something right. And apparently everyone loves your Chilean sea bass. We'll get to that later. Um, but my question is why situate? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled you're coming. I'm just, I'm curious. Yeah, it's, I mean, Sitra is it's a great town. We want to invest, uh, we want to grow with the Sitra. I mean, it's such a great town. I like the uh, harbor. You know, I mean that's regional IP situation, and also, and also, I do a chance to buy the property. It's just that's what that's where they come from. Okay. Cause uh, the property is on sale at the time, so yeah. Okay. A good question, because <laughs> we're not easy to find here. <laughs> right. Oh uh, yeah, it was just there was a connection. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board, Mr. Vignani? Hi, uh, Sam, first of all, welcome. Um, I think you. the whole board wants to welcome you. And as Andrew said, you've got great reviews and Karen said that as well. So we're, we're completely confident they're gonna run a, a great restaurant, keep it clean. The two things you have to pay attention to are, as Karen mentioned, the alcohol, um, certainly less likely to serve minors, 
uh, but to serving minors and over serving people and then the noise. Um, so keep those two things in mind and the cleanliness as Karen Conway brought up a second ago. And, well, and you'll be very successful. Um, I do have a question about the layout. As I look at your patio, the one thing that concerned me for the noise factor of the people that live in the condos over there is there's quite a few more tables on the patio than there were previously with Riva. And um, I couldn't, I can't figure out from the design, are you actually closing that access to the street off on the patio? Is there like a wall or some sort of structure that's not gonna allow people to walk through to front street? Would you have to enter in through the back by the movie theater? I, I I don't think so. I I think just I mean it's a drawing. Maybe just I I don't, yeah, no, I don't I, think I, so. Yeah, I can't. There's a there's a solid line like the brick wall on the other side. I didn't know what if that was part of your it's, plan to contain that more. It's I not a wall. I think it's a table. To, Sorry. Maybe allow me to explain that. I, I think that is because of, I'm not a professional uh, architect. <laughs> um, I drew those lines um, just because ABC sees. Based on the ABCC rules and regulations, any kind of outdoor uh, seating where alcohol license, alcohol beverages are served, it has to be an enclosed area. So those are just a representation of how can, people cannot reach over, but definitely it's not a solid wall. Our intention is to put on some planters to delineate uh, what is inside, what is outside, so that uh, we uh, uh, comply with the APCC rules and regulations. Yeah, great. My concern was the fire department. I saw Al on a second ago, um, but I just want to make sure that that's open so people can get it and out and be safe. Yes, um, absolutely. Point well taken. Great. Um, great. Well, you know, again, those three things are the things for me. I'm sure you'll look out for them. You, you're clearly doing it in your other restaurants. So I wish you the best success. Thank you. Um, does the board, are any members of the board have any additional questions? Okay, this is a public hearing, so we um, would like to open it up to the public if they would like to um, add any questions or comments. Easiest thing is to um, either use the reactions button at the bottom and raise hand, up oh, I see one, or you can simply just take yourself off video. And we have both, so uh, uh, Mr. Nikolai, I hope I've said that correct, I'd like to invite you to give your name and address Thank you very much. My name is uh, Larry Nikolai. I am an owner at the uh, Situate Harbor Condo, and I am the chair of the trustees of the condos. So uh, we too welcome uh, Mr. Lin and, and his restaurant. Uh, uh, we've done our homework a little bit, and we think you run a pretty good uh, show uh, down in Connecticut. Uh, we want to be good neighbors. And certainly uh, we would like uh, you to be a good neighbor to us. You know, I think as has been expressed, we've had some, some relatively unpleasant issues uh, in the past uh, with noise in particular, uh, loud bands that have played late into the night that have severely impacted some of the owners that overlook uh, the, uh, the patio area. Uh, we are working with uh, Steve Warner to try to define that. Uh, part of that is the use. Uh, we hope that this is for dining only and not to be used for cocktail uh, in, in a bar area late at night or throughout, I say, the day. Uh, in trying to define the area, um, I saw the last lease. I think it's a little misleading in terms of the square footage. Uh, it's our understanding that from the corner of the building to the pole that previously held the marquee to the movie theater for the length of the building. So that distance is 12 and a half feet. The length of the building is uh, 50 some odd feet. So we're looking at roughly 625 square foot area there, leaving the other area as a as a right of way uh, walkway uh, for residents and as I heard, probably for the uh, uh, importance of the fire department. Um, I just recently became aware of a letter by one of the owners, uh, and I agree with a number of her issues. And that's one of the reasons why we wanna be part of the process. Uh, we wanna make sure in terms of the, of the cleanliness, of uh, the music that is being played, and I understand the least 
will uh, is not for live music, but it's more for background ambiance type of music as I understand uh, going forward with it. And then the other part of that is that uh, as where the uh, uh, patio is a uh, uh, easement to unit S24, that is part of our condo association and that we also be named as an additional insured on any uh, liability insurance that, uh, that you have uh, relative to the use of the patio and any alcohol. We have, there is no uh, break in passage from the patio directly onto Situate Harbor condo property, in particular, our, our uh, parking lot. So any of the guests, any of the patrons can easily uh, walk from that patio onto our property and liability is therefore a significant concern of, of uh, our association. So I just want to kind of pass that on what our concerns are and uh, whether that be part of the planning board or whether uh, we work directly with Mr. Lynn and I think we could do so uh, very appropriately and in accommodating each other's concerns. Um, I'll ask the, uh, your attorney, Ms. Hugh, if you would like to reply to any of those concerns. I understand um, Mr. Nikolai's concern. And certainly uh, since we are leasing part of the um, exclusive common area to a particular unit, but somehow that is also governed by the master deed and the declaration of trust and rules and regulations of the condominium. So I think probably the best way for us to be a good neighbor is to um, get in contact with Mr. Nikolai directly and um, you know make sure that um, in terms of abiding by the rules and regulations of the condominium association, understanding it is the first thing uh, is to obtain a copy of the rules and regulation, making sure that we know what we're doing. And the second aspect of it is that making sure that the insurance binder that we obtained, uh, certainly um, there is an insurance requirement with the lease that the lease on the lease agreement that we have with the Situated Harbor Development LLC. But we wanna just make sure that we also add additional insured so that anything happened, uh, the uh, condominium association is not liable for it or at least covered under that same policy. Um, so I think th these are just initial two issues. I'm sure um, going forward, there will be more um, I wouldn't say issues, maybe more questions or more communication that is needed. I would just encourage that Sam uh, or uh, Ms. Nikolai, we can certainly exchange contact information so that we make sure we work closely so that there's no confusion in the future. We would welcome that, thank you. Uh, you could thank probably you. coordinate that through our office. Uh, we have each other, we have, if you have Mr. Nikolai, if you provide Lorraine, with your information, um, I'm sure she can make that introduction directly. We'll Great, do. much Thank appreciated. You. Great. Um, Mr. Nicola, you, you could call me tomorrow. This is Lorraine Devon. Oh, okay, we'll do <laughs> The voice over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any other questions or comments from the public about this matter? Um, you can take your uh, video on or raise your hand. I'm not seeing any. Um, I will say that I, I was pleased to see the revision, that late, the late entry revision that um, there being no um, outdoor entertainment and that it shuts down at 10, actually earlier than some of the out, other outdoor entertainment, I mean, uh, outdoor dining facilities in the town and is I think very respectful of, of the proximity to the neighbors. So I do appreciate that um, personally. If there's no further questions, um, I will put to the board, are we prepared to make a motion on this matter or because we did get some documents late, it's perfectly appropriate that we might have to wait, but um, how does the board feel? I'll make a motion if everyone's ready. Okay, did you see the revised motion, Mr. Vinelli? I did not. Um, if you can- I have it. Karen, do you mind reading it? I've got it, yep, I'd be happy to. 
Move that the Board of Selectmen approve Front Street Situate LLC doing business as Chopsticks and Forks for a new on-premise Section 12 restaurant all alcohol license at 116 to 118 Front Street. The premise is one floor and a patio with two entrances and two exits. The floor of the building is 1,684 square feet and the patio is 1,300 square feet, which I heard someone question tonight. Um, for a total of 2,984 square feet. Liquor license hours indoor Monday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. and outdoor Monday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Connelly. Is there a second? A second by Mr. Vignani. Um, obviously, if there's any revisions that come down the road, then they will be brought before the board to consider. So we have a motion. We have a second. Is there any further discussion on this matter? Just, Lorraine, I, I know you've done this. You do it up for all of them. These are consistent with the other restaurants down there, right? Those hours. Yes. It's you. actually less. Is right. Right. I noticed that. that. Yeah, Lorraine did, was kind enough to give us a, a spreadsheet with everyone else's hours, and these are these are on the conservative side. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to do a roll call vote for this first motion. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. And then we just have the common Vic vote. Yes. Yeah, thank you. That motion carries 4-0. And do I have a motion for the common? Move, move that the Board of Selectmen approve, approve a common Vic jeweler's license for Front Street Situate LLC doing business as chopsticks and forks at 116 to 118 Front Street. Moved by Ms. Conley. Is there a second? Mr. Vignani seconded. Uh, this matter, if there's no further discussion, the matter requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Mr. Lynn, we are very uh, excited have, to welcome you. What? We, one, we, more? Uh, Sorry? one more? Sorry? One more motion. Oh, I missed one. Okay. We're Sorry. not going to do the outdoor entertainment permit. Yeah, there's no, no okay. outdoor entertainment. <laughs> um, well, this is for indoor. We don't need an indoor one either because they're only going to have uh, like taped music, a radio, and a television. Okay. No so live entertainment is planned. Strike that motion. All right. Thank you. That was great. Now I will welcome you, Mr. Lynn, to our community. Uh, the only question we didn't ask is your timetable now that you have your permissions in place. My timetable. Okay. Yeah. We try to, we plan to open it up around uh, June. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Great. So Great. if possible. Well, you will be popular. I am certain there'll be a line out the door. So welcome to the community. Nice so. to, uh, to meet you both. And um, yeah, we'll see you in June. Well, we'll see you Thank before. Thank you very that, much. But, um, okay. Yeah. And, and make sure that you connect with Mr. Uh, Nikolai and, and you guys can sort out anything that needs sorting out. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Have a Thank great you. evening. Thank you all. Good night. Welcome. Thank you. Thank and Thank I you will. I will note for all of the Hollywood squares um, that are paying attention, we've been joined by Ms. Curran, our fifth select board member who had uh, a work commitment and has joined us now. So hello, Mara. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Sorry, I, I'm late. No, that's you. You're right on time because we are now at our second public hearing, um, which is the fuel storage license for Aaron Cutler, um, CCO Holdings Limited LLC, um, and is is the purchaser and I see that Mr. Sullivan is here representing um, and Chief Murphy. Oh, I thought we had Al, Al Elliott a minute ago. Oh, there's, <laughs> we have both the chief and the deputy chief from the fire department. So uh, Mr. Sullivan, would you like to, we did get all of the backup. Um, this is for the location on the driftway that is the gas backwards um, um, development. And this is for them to st uh, store their fuel on site to facilitate the gas station. Mr. Sullivan. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, so I represent CCO Holdings, which um, has obtained a site plan review um, in the VCN to operate a retail convenience store and gas backwards at 4852 New Driftway. Um, we got the permit after several public hearings um, and we have now submitted to you folks for a fuel storage tank, two 15,000 gallon tanks that will be underground. With me is the applicant, um, Adam Cutler, 
Aaron Cutler, excuse me, from CCO Holdings, the project engineer, Hal Choba, and the contractor who will actually install the tanks, uh, Kevin Gottwald, in case the board has any questions. Um, as I understand it, this is the first new gas station in the town of Situate, um, perhaps in my lifetime as somebody who grew up in town. Um, so this, the process uh, is not one that's familiar to the applicant or I think the town, but um, we've tried to follow the best we can with supporting materials. And we have a, a whole host of people here to answer any questions the selectmen may have. Once we got the VCN special permit, or excuse me, site plan review, um, we submitted all of the materials for the fuel storage tanks uh, to Deputy Chief Elliott. Um, Mr. Cutler, who owns uh, several or is involved in ownership and operations of several of these types of facilities, has gone through the process in other states and in Massachusetts, but never here in Situate. Um, it would appear to be pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, we have to work in close tandem with the town and specifically the fire department to make sure all safety and protocol is utilized. The tanks will store um, up to 26,000 gallons of gasoline and 4,000 of diesel. Um, for a lawyer like me, it gets a little complicated on the engineering because it's two 15,000 gallon tanks. The explanation as to how that occurs is it's a split tank which will be seg segregated with 4,000 gallons for diesel. And um, my engineering friends who are here with me tonight can give more detail to that should the selectmen have any questions. Um, but I think we've submitted all of the uh, materials both to the board and to Deputy Chief Elliott. And so we would ask that this court, that this uh, board grant us leave so that we can move forward and Mr. Cutler and his group can buy the property and get moving. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or so too would any member of my team. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. That was exactly the first question I had was how does that work <laughs> with 215? Mr. Cutler, would you like to add anything about this application? Um, no, I, I think Walter covered it pretty well. Um, well, if you want to know how, exactly how that works, so there'd be uh, 15,000 gallons of uh, regular unleaded, and then the second tank would be divided 11,000 gallons of super unleaded and 4,000 gallons of diesel. Okay, I'm illuminated. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, with um, obviously the biggest concern for us is that the our fire department is comfortable with the specs and the and the qualifications. I know you've worked with them, but I'll look to Chief Murphy. Would you like to add anything about this before I open it to the board? Uh, we did review this. Deputy Chief and I reviewed the site plan and uh, all the um, components. They seem like they have a good game plan together. Um, we're just making sure that the uh, from A to Z this gets covered uh, for all the safety aspects of the property. We're in full support. It looks like they have a good game plan. And Deputy Elliott can answer any technical questions, but I think they have a you know a, a nice a nice um, going forward. Okay, and there are state permits required as well, which are in place. Correct. We're going to be going to the state rep, the local. Option is approved. Okay. Um, Al, did you want to add anything? Yeah, you, you asked about the state permit. They're also required to uh, to file an application with the Department of Fire Service for for uh, for review. Um, we've offered a list of conditions um, after doing some research based on the comprehensive Massachusetts fire codes um, in the Mass General Laws. Um, and the, the, in order for them to file with the state, they're gonna they're gonna need our approval, um, and uh, with our list of conditions, uh, they'll also need uh, a registration with the town, uh, and, and uh, they'll have to um, also supply their license uh, that that we're we're talking about this evening. Um, so you know we we've uh, we got some recommendations from the town of Hanover who was extensive uh, experience with with um, self-service gas stations. Uh, so we, we think uh, we, we've made a pretty comprehensive list of uh, conditions uh, for them to adhere to. We, we've also had meetings with Mr. Cutler about the site plan, uh, access to the property, uh, turning radius of our, our largest trucks and ability to access the site. Um, and uh, placement of fire hydrants and that sort of thing. Uh, so we're working closely with uh, Mr. Cutler on, on the project and uh, we plan on overseeing, you know, it, it, when, when it begins construction. Okay. Yeah, I did note that you had added some fire suppression requirements on your list of conditions. So um, 
Did the board have any questions for any of the participants, the applicants, or our advisors? Mr. Vignani? I'm wondering if the applicant can just go over their site plan. I'm, it's, it's hard to follow. Um, if you can go over from the street, what, what's it going to look like? So it's a gas backwards plan. Um, is there a possibility of sharing the screen? Or? Yeah, I know. I was just looking to see if we have it in the backup. Uh, yeah, there's one, one picture that's more of an engineering picture than anything else. Uh, um, Mr. Color can share his screen if okay. So have, page page forty, Karen. Oh, okay. And and Mr. Color, do you have it handy or let's see? I'm looking at page. Try to dig it up. Hal, do you have? Oh, it? I have it here. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Trusting me with technology. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I do like the technology. I have to say. So that's what you're oh, looking you for, Tony. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's great. So if, if you look, um, the way that I'm seeing, it, if you look at the left side of your screen, that would be um, the new driftway. And then the, um, the building, when, when you have this gas backwards building, essentially what you're doing is you're putting the, the fuel pumps um, in, the, in the back side of the property, whereas usually in a gas station, you would see the fuel pumps on the front side of the property. Um, so that that's kind of the definition of gas backwards. But so you have the building right there that's kind of right on the new driftway. And then you have the fuel dispensers beyond the building um, where, where you can see that they're- uh, right. So is the parking on the back side of the building? Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. And there's only one entrance in front in the south? Yes, there's one entrance and one egress and the egress goes, um, you can either take a right turn or a left turn out of the property. Hmm. Is that, I, I assume that passes all the, the zoning codes, it seems. Yeah, this has been reviewed and approved by the planning board. And what is the actual front building gonna be? Is it, is it- So a, that's uh, 4,000 square feet of that will be a convenience store and another 1,500 square feet of it. So it's a total of 5,500 square feet. Um, the other 1,500 square feet of it will be uh, likely a sandwich shop or, or some kind of, uh, some kind of, I won't say quick serve restaurant, but a, a, a restaurant that will serve sandwiches or something to the like of that. So you'll lease that portion? We will, yes. Yeah, okay, so it'll be two, two enterprises in there. What is this, what is the brand of the store that's selling the gas? Um, the brand is, uh, we are working with um, a Marty Block who owns the Reynolds uh, package store on- um, no, I mean, the, is it like a, I don't wanna say the wrong name, but is it- Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, so the, the fuel itself will be mobile, uh, uh -huh. but the, the convenience store itself will be, will be run by Marty Block and will be uh, something like New Driftway convenience. Oh, okay, store. so it'll be, a, it's not like a chain. It's a, no, 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 it'll okay. definitely be a local, local entity. And Marty has a great reputation in town, so that's a good partner. Um, where are the tanks actually going? Um, if we can pull that back up again, we can show just to the um, just to the side of the uh, fuel dispensers. So the north side of the picture, yeah. right there. Right there. Yes. Okay. So maybe Al, you know, I mean, our biggest concern with that is the environmental at, at you know aspect if something were to go wrong or spillage or whatever who who makes sure that all those conditions are in place because it's isn't it wetlands and well yeah, uh, i know they're required to have leak detection in the tanks uh they're also going to be anchored and they're going to have a 12-inch slab on top of them for, for, for protection uh they do have to do semi-annual inspections of the tank and the state does that um so, so uh, it, you know, in, I, we really didn't review the environmental impact from the fire department standpoint. We're, we're more reviewing the safety of the uh, of the installations in the fire uh, protection systems. Um, so, you know, the, the tanks are double walled fiberglass tanks, as I understand. Uh, they're going to be installed according to the manufacturer's, um, you, you know, um, recommendations. And the state is going to do the. Uh, also do um, an inspection of them because uh, they do have to file that application uh, for their license with the Department of Fire Services. Right. Now, do, you, do you know of any 
envi extra environmental precautions that you're taking in that area? Yeah, I'd like to pass this over to uh, Hal Chuba. Hal, oh, sure. the engineer. And we, we did an extensive peer review on this uh, in, in, in order to get the, um, the permits with the town. And we, we actually added quite a bit of extra um, protections there that Hal can address. Uh, yes, good evening. For the record, my name is Hal Chuba. I'm a consulting engineer with offices at 112 State Road in Dartmouth, Mass. I'm working with Mr. Cutler and also we have with us uh, the installer. Just, just for the boards, just to give you a background, this is, um, actually, I'm, I'm a licensed engineer in the five states in, uh, in New England and I've probably designed over a couple of hundred gas stations in the past 10 years. So we do this for a living. We do it on a weekly basis. What we have here, we do have extra precaution that because we understand the location of the project and the proximity to the back with the, uh, with the sensitive area. So uh, the first one, the, uh, the tanks are double wall tanks with uh, interstitial uh, uh, system that would monitor the tanks constantly on a 24 hour basis. Uh, the second, what we have also as a precaution in the parking lot, the whole back parking lot is graded to a, a closed drainage system that has catch basins with oil water separators. And those oil water separators that are on site has the capacity to capture 4,750 gallons of fuel in case of a spill. So let me explain one, one aspect of this also. A tanker has a 12,000 gallon uh, capacity, but a tanker has five compartments, and each compartment is approximately 2,500 to 3,500 gallons. So the largest compartment in the tank is 3,500 gallons. So let's say in, in case of a spill, God forbid, if they had a spill with one of the compartments, all that fuel, and you can only unload one compartment at a time, all that fuel would be collected in the closed drainage system through the oil water separators, which are able to to capture 4,750 uh, uh, gallons. Now, in case there's a catastrophic, whatever we wanna call it, somehow the, the tanker tipped on in the parking lot and all this, the fuel came out of the, the tanker, the 12,000 gallon. There's also a valve on the property that all the employees would be uh, uh, trained to find and close. Once you close that valve, that valve would close the entire system. So what happens with all the fuel would uh, be collected by the closed drainage system, which has the capacity of the 47, 6,000 gallons, then it starts to, to pop out of the drainage, uh, out of the gates on the catch basin. But because of the, the, the way the parking lot is graded, we have all around, we have a low spot in the middle of the parking lot. And then we have all around the, the parking is about 18 inches higher than the, uh, than the catch basins. So with that way, we can we can collect approximately 27,000 gallon of fuel on site that will never overtop that retaining wall in the back. So in any case, this is an extra, extra precaution that we don't do on any other projects. But just to assure you, this project went through a thorough review with the peer engineer for almost a year. We we went through every aspect of the project. The tanks and the system would be installed in compliance with every local, state, and federal regulations, environmental and and uh, uh, and fire, uh, uh, and also would be filed with the state marshal. Thank you. And, and I can also tell you that I've had uh, I've had several people bid on this project, and they <laughs> they've said that 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 this is as overbuilt as they've ever seen it. So uh, I think we're, we're doing it as, as uh, we're protecting it as well as, as, as you possibly could. Thank you for that thorough explanation. Mr. Villani, do you have a follow-up question? Nope, I'm all set, thank you. Great, um, does anyone else from the board have a question? All right, this um, is a public hearing. So I will at this point open it up uh, to anyone that would like to comment or question about this application um, for a fuel storage license. If you'd like to participate, you can put your video on um, or go to reactions and raise hand and we will give you an opportunity to ask you a question. So I am scrolling through our list and I do not see anybody with a question. I think you were very thorough in the, in the most important question. Mr. Goodrich. So I guess just 
one more general question. Is there any, is, is there any reason why a new, there's no regulations or for a new service station like this not to have an, any electrical vehicle charging? Is it infrastructure? Is it cost? I'm just, I'm curious, because I don't think so, there's any. Sorry uh, to interrupt. We, uh, the town actually required that we put two electric vehicle chargers in there and that's part of our project. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so where, where we, are those? We were actually, the sorry, zone? What's that? Where is that on the, the site? Oh, it, it, I don't, it's not on the site plan because we're still oh. working with the, um, we have to work with the EV people to create that, uh, that infrastructure build out. Um, but the town is, uh, required that we do it. We were actually thinking of doing it anyways. Um, but it, so I believe it's, um, it's a condition in the approval, Mr. Goodrich, that we have the electric charging stations on site. Um, but we need the vendor to locate those for us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I missed that. No, no, no. I don't think you missed it. I think no, no, no. It, it wasn't there. Great question. Are there any other questions or input? Um, if not, is there someone that is would like to make a motion on this matter? Perhaps. <laughs> I'll do it when I find it. Yeah. I have it. Yeah. If someone gets to it first. As, as the public, okay. I've got imagine, it. there's an okay. awful lot of backup or something like this. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. That's all right. Move that the select board vote to approve a fuel storage license for 26,000 gallons of unleaded gasoline and 4,000 gallons of diesel to CCO Holdings LLC for the property located at 48 to 52 New Driftway, subject to the requirements of the Town of Situate bylaw 32010, Mass General Chapter. I think it's 14, 148, section 13, and any and all conditions set forth by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Department of Fire Services. Moved by Ms. Connolly, is there a second? Second by Mr. Vignani. Uh, this matter requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Motion carries five zero. Uh, okay, okay. What, just one more thing, Karen. Yes. Um, I just wanted to thank Michelle Segezi, who did a lot of extensive work on this with uh, Deputy Chief Al Elliott to put the procedures together for the town of Situate since it's been probably 30 years or more that right. we've put in a gas station. So thanks to Michelle. Well, thank you for that note, Mark Larry. I mentioned the fact too that we're all just a, we're our guinea pig. So uh, when uh, when is your just uh, construction schedule on this? Just for folks to know when you're going to be going. So we need to go to pre-construction, and we anticipate doing that in the next uh, several weeks, and then we're hoping sometime over the summer to start construction. Okay. And the timetable we don't know yet. I would. I, you know, I'm really hoping that we get done in 2021. <laughs> okay. But we'll see. It's really hard to get materials, and there, there's yeah, a lot of variables. Yeah, so backed yeah. up. Well, great. Well, we'll look forward to that improvement and and that part of uh, in the Greenbush area. We are looking forward to it. So thank you, as Lorraine said. Thank you to everybody. I know this was a lot. I mean, just from the backup, we know how much work this was. So thank you to our fire department and to everyone that participated. And with that, uh, we will move on to our next um, agenda item. Thank cool. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Good night. Thank you. All right. Our next agenda item is for board and committee interviews for the Situate Housing um, Housing Authority tenant board member. And as the board um, will may recall, is that um, according to well, I will let Ms. Ms. Kern. Would you like to explain why we need a tenant rep on this, or do you want me to do it since you just came in? She is, uh, Ms. Curran is our liaison to the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, right, but this doesn't have anything to do with the Affordable Housing no. Trust. But, <laughs> You're right. But yes. I, I certainly I jump in. Authority. <laughs> I'm I tired of in talking, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has to do with new legislation that the governor passed in January 
requiring tenant representation on the Situate Housing Authority Board? I knew you knew the answer. <laughs> All right, so no. we did. We do have five applicants, which is very, which is awesome, um, but only one position. So we are going to. Um, I I didn't check to see if everyone oh. is here. Oh, I, think, I don't hear voice. Um, and it has, uh, what we'd like to do is to ask all of the applicants three questions. So I'll, I'll tee it up before we, we go to each individual. We wanna know why, why you're interested in joining this board, um, what you hope to accomplish as a member of the board and what experience do you have that could be of value of serving on the board. And we'll remind you of those questions, but um, Patricia Altiera, I hope I said that right, is our first applicant. Is she on? here. Patricia, if you are, would you raise hand or um, take your video off? I don't see you around the I don't oh, see you. Wait a minute. Oh, we have Ellen, but <laughs> you're not up yet. <laughs> um, okay, so we will, um, is Diane Leonard here? She, oh, she okay, Diane is here. Um, Diane, if you could just give your name and address for the record and we'll jump right into the questions. Are you, I love technology. Diane, can you hear us? Because we can't hear you. Oh, now can you hear me? Oh, there you go. Okay. All right. Uh, name and address, please. For okay, the it's, I'm sorry. And I, sorry about the video, it's, it's not working. Diane Leonard, 27 Lincoln Park Drive, Situate. Great, thank you. And why do you want to join this board? I think I can make a contribution to the board. I've moved in here a year ago and my background years ago, I'm an artist now, it was I have an associate's degree in accounting and that's kind of say, served me throughout my life is being learning efficiency. And after living here, I think, I think I'm a good candidate to help on the board. Great. Um, and what do you hope to accomplish by serving on the board? That's a very good question because I actually hadn't thought about that, but I'd like to see that I think efficiency could be made better in each of the housings, although I haven't seen the other one and you know, how the housing and situate works together so that it is cost efficient for people to be here. Okay, great. And what, and you've already said your experience is you're in accounting. accounting. Yes, I'm an associate's degree and it actually served me very well. <laughs> it was a good degree. Um, great. Are there any additional questions from the board? What no, I think I talked to Kathy and she answered most of them for me. Okay. So I'm good. Okay, great. Does the board have any questions for um, Diane? Uh, Tony? I'm sorry. Uh, just a quick question. Is there anything that you see right now that is an initiative you would want to attack? Probably the wrong word, but address. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Sure. Is there any uh, initiative right now that you'd like to address? Oh, no, actually not. No, I'm listening and learning from all of you and how it works. And the town, because I'm new to the town as well, so I certainly don't, you know, have anything to add until I really learn Situate a little bit. It's a great town. I listen to the video every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only commenter. <laughs> well, we who does the best job? No, don't ask that question. I've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> Um, great. Did uh, somebody else have a question? I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Kern. I just have a question, not specifically for Diane, but just before we move on a little bit, because I couldn't determine the process through the notes. Did the Housing Authority first vet candidates, um, or are we having the first pass here on the tenant? We are having the first pass, the Housing okay. Authority. It's assigned to the local select board. Okay, perfect. According Thanks. to the law pack passed by Governor Bill. Okay. Thank you. But Kathy DeMarsh was supposed to be on the call. If you had she is. Yeah, okay. she is. Yeah. I saw her name pass there. Okay. That's all. Nope. Diane answered uh, your questions. Great. So thank you, Diane. Thank you. Thank well, you. I, could I follow up on Morris question? Yes, of course. So in other words, up until now, there have been no tenant representatives on the housing authority. Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, that's a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Great. 
Um, next on the list is Mr. Arthur Leslie. Um, is he with us? If you are, uh, either I'm looking through. I don't. Mr. Leslie is there, Mr. Leslie. Oh, I see. There. Yep. Okay, Mr. Leslie, if you'd like to um, just give us your name and address, and we'll ask you the same questions. Okay. Uh, am I am I on now? You are. We can hear you. Okay, great. I, I didn't know what Zoom was until uh, you sent it out, and I uh, studied it, and I'm just hoping that I will be okay. Uh, my background is that uh, out of high school, I um, joined the U.S. Army, and I was in the Medical Corps and a division called Neuropsychiatric Technician, and I appeared it, 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 that job is Fort Sam Houston, Texas, and then again at Walter Reed Hospital in DC. Uh, I, after the service, I uh, became an electronic technician from uh, a school that was called Saunders, which was on Huntington Avenue in Boston, and I received an associate's degree after going there for two years. Uh, I was married. I have three, four children, two male, two female. I worked 19 years for RCA, and I was considered the troubleshooter. Whenever there was a problem that came up that uh, other people uh, did not have the skills to address, uh, I would get these calls, and I would go out and do my very best in order to be sure that these people understand what we're talking about and what the problem might be. Uh, I also own my own business uh, as an electronics repair station. And I also served as a photographer and a videographer. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Um, so why do you want to join the board? I, I just, well, I'm, this is my 14th year here. Well, and uh, I see things uh, on the board. Uh, in fact, I testified when the cupola on the building at uh, Central Park, uh, I went before the people uh, that day and we talked about getting the cupola uh, repaired, which they did. And we just have a wonderful working, lovely building. Every so often there's minor little problems, but usually nothing that comes to tuition. And I, I feel that I could serve uh, to help anyone or uh, to settle a dispute, which uh, may occur and has occurred in different times. Uh, I also run the weather station in my building uh, downstairs, and uh, I print the uh, forecast because one uh, cold March day a couple of years ago, I was taking my dog out, and uh, a person of, uh, that was uh, uh, exceedingly elderly was outside with just a sweater on, and it was really, really cold. And uh, I, I, she said, well, I don't know. I don't watch the weather reports. I don't know. So I figured it was my duty to take a hobby that I've had since I was a child and uh, be able to be Don Kent all over again. Great. Well, thank you for that. And um, and I you touched on most of the uh, the questions, but I mean, if if you're appointed to this board, what what do you think that you would like to accomplish? I would like to accomplish whatever is is necessary to accomplish. I mean, I cannot give you a uh, an exact answer on that, but uh, I have very good uh, uh, skills in having people uh, to be a, a group of people, and, uh, and these can be solved within uh, just by talking and understanding where Don't a person is coming from. Hello? Sorry, Diane, if you wouldn't mind muting. Uh, you, yeah, yeah, there we go. Sorry, somebody just stepped over you. Go ahead. Mr. Okay. Uh, well, if you have any other questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Great. Well, we certainly have your background experience, and thank you so much for your service to the country. Um, are there um, any other questions for the board? 
I mean, from the board for Mr. Leslie. <laughs> yes, Karen. You're muted. Oh, muted. <laughs> we had an incident at the house. I had to mute myself. Um, <laughs> Uh, have you been to the other housing um, developments, the, the the two other properties? Yes, I have. And you think you can represent all three? I I do think that I can operate all three of them, and uh, and I'm a very good listener, and I'm I'm very calm, and so uh, I feel that I absolutely can handle whatever comes forth that I'd have to handle. Very good, thank you. Thank you, any other questions for Mr. Leslie? Uh, I think we're gonna be in one of those situations. It's so hard to pick only one person, uh, but we do have the next applicant is Ellen McKay Mulcahy. Hello, Ellen, if we can unmute you. You can just give your name and address and we will ask you why you would like to join this board. Okay, uh, hello everyone, my name is Ellen Mulcahy. Address is 33 Lincoln Park Drive, Situate Mass, of course. And um, what was that question, Karen? Uh, it was, why, <laughs> why do you want to join this board, Ellen? Okay, okay yeah, but just making some notes. Why do I want to join? Well, let's see. I, I think that, well, personally, myself, I've been here, I think it's four years. Um, so certainly not as much as this gentleman before me there, but... Um, I grew up in Situate and I'm blessed to live here in this place at, at Lincoln Park. And I am, um, you know, I think it's a great town. I, I like um, that they're having, their, they're building the new veteran senior center. I think there could be a lot of activity between that new building and that new whole project between the senior housing, um, you know, um, just the properties. I think the three three are what? It's Lincoln Park, Central Park, and Wheeler Park. Is that correct? Yes. Right. And the new one behind Central Park is not part of the Situate Housing Authority. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. <laughs> okay. So um, why do I want to join? Um, I, because I think it's a great place. I, I don't have any complaints here. I mean, we're, we're very, I, as I said, I'm blessed to be here. I think that it would be nice to see see what's going on around at the different properties and, and, and help people if they needed help in some way to present. If it, if it sounds like it might be a thing where people have problems. So I, I suppose that, you know, um, you'd read it, you, assess the problem and I guess bring it up to the board. So um, I don't know, I just, what, give me another question, Karen. <laughs> I'm done with that um, one. So the next question is what kind of experience do you have that you could add value to this board? The what kind of, what? what? What's your background and, and what kind of experience? Oh, do you oh think my background about? probably doesn't, wouldn't have much to do at all with the board being a board member here, but I have had a lot of different um, experiences. My last, my last experience was working in education. I worked at the Wampatuck School for 16 years and um, I, I think I can I relate. To, I, mean, I think I can communicate well with people. I think that I have patience. I mean, that's something you try to get more and more every day of. <laughs> and um, no, I, I just think that if I can help, I would like to help. But, you know, I think there's probably someone a lot more qualified than I am, but I'm just putting my name in there and to see if there's something that I can do for the good of all concerned. Great, thanks, Ellen. I appreciate that. Does the board have any questions for uh, Ellen Mulcahy? Yes, current. I have one. Um, Ellen, just you made me think of something that I probably should have asked both Diane and, and Arthur is uh, being the tenant representative I guess I would ask, are you prepared to receive an onslaught of inquiries from all the residents? Because you will be looked upon as that, that ally. Um, uh, so I, I, would, I, I would anticipate yeah. that would happen. You know? That's a really good question because the, uh, the other thing that I failed to mention is what would be precisely my duties and as far as, far as like say, so how much time would 
it require for this position? And um, what, like I weekly and then monthly, I know there's some trainings that go on. There's a lot of abbreviations that I would I have to memorize these things, all these CDHC, yeah, all these things, which is, I suppose it's a good thing because you must do a lot of writing, but um, let's see. Maybe we can ask Kathy to answer that for everyone. Because oh, that, that would be good. Yes, yeah. so yeah. that, because that would be my next question is I'd like to kind of find out what it is that, you know, the time, the times involved, the duties involved. And then I could truthfully think about it and come back to you and say, well, uh, I don't know that I'm the girl for you or I think that I could do this. So that would all be kind of I have to think about all of that, too. All right. Uh, and I know you would, you? you would, of course, you know. Yeah, we're, this is an unusual appointment for the board because normally it, there, it's an advisory board to us, but this is yeah. differently. So we're all- I would think it would all be vetted you know. before you get to it, but. Um, is, I thought, Kathy, you are here. Would you mind um, just answering the, the general question? It's a good question of, of the time commitment that you anticipate this role having. Are we here? I know you're here. Kathy, oh, okay. it, oh, you know what? Her, there's no, yeah, there's no microphone or anything. Is she it's not okay. Here? I mean, I can wait. I can go see Kathy, you know, um, yeah. um, tomorrow if I, you know, if she's around. I don't know. But I mean, from my, in my perspective, I, I can wait to get the information. I don't need it right now. So. Okay, great. Um, then if there aren't any questions, more questions for Ellen, and we seem to not be able to connect with Kathy, I will... We have one other applicant, Mr. Walker. I don't know if he is on. Clarence Walker, if you are. Oh, yep, you're a co-host now. Can you um, just say your name and address and we will ask you the same questions. Hello, my name is Clarence Walker. I live on Lincoln Park Drive. Ah, ah a couple of Lincoln Parkers. Um, great, well, thank you for, for applying. Would you... Um, yeah. Tell us why you were interested in joining this board. Well, I'd like to be interested in joining because I'd like to be more than just a resident that lives here. I'd like to participate in in my uh, community, which I live in. Hello, Ellen. How are you? <laughs> um, That's why. Great. Oh, there you are. Sorry, I didn't know your video was there. Great. And, um, and if you are the... Um, um, a, a tenant rep, how do you, what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I hope to accomplish a little bit more a community involvement because with the amount of people that, that reside here, the amount of knowledge that everyone must have must be enormous based upon just based on life experience and everything else. You know, I mean, my, my, now my personal background is I was a, a correctional officer then I worked at an airline then I lived overseas for a little while. I'm a grandfather. I have three grown kids, five granddaughters. You know, you know. I mean, I've been around, so you know, I have a well a wealth of knowledge. But I'm sure I'm not the only one. Great. How long have you lived in Lincoln Park, Irwin's? I've been there exactly fifteen months. Fifteen months. Great. Well, welcome. Uh... Great, and you you touched a little bit on your experience, but um, of your experience that you've had, um, how do you think that would add value to to this board? I think I think you know I think when you really look at things, um, you're more blessed than anything else. I mean, I get up every morning because I barely sleep, so I get up and I'm at the beach at like three thirty four. I catch the sunrise every morning, you know, and then you just get to see what the day day what the day might bring within the world. So you see how that might relate to, you know, your normal day life. Because there's times when the when we walk in the morning to see the sky's beautiful, but the sea's violent. So, you know, you might have a beautiful morning, but you might have your internal clock might be going crazy. You know, and then there's days where the sea's calm, but there's a heavy o o overcast or, or something like like that so you, you see how it relates to other people's lives and you got to remember you know you're 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 fortunate enough to live here in where you live at and i just to to reiterate mara curran's question about 
um, being prepared to, you know, be the representative for your neighbors and the other developments? Are you comfortable yeah. with being that guy? Long, long as it makes sense. <laughs> okay. It makes sense. It has to be logical. Um, you know, don't tell me that there's a woodpecker outside. I can't do nothing about that. It's a woodpecker. I ain't going to kill a woodpecker for you. It's I, a woodpecker. Will, public service <laughs> comes with <my laughs> responsibility <laughs> and challenge. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Great. Um, are there are there questions for Mr. Other additional questions for Mr. Walker? I don't see any. Okay. Um, I will just circle back to see if Patricia has joined us. Um, I'd hate to miss her if she were here. I don't see her. Okay. So, um, so we've heard from four applicants. Normally what the board will do is we will, um, we will um, review applicants at the end of our meeting and have some time to just think about the position and, and the qualifications, as I said, um, earlier. Unfortunately, with only one position, that's always challenging because anybody that raises their hand to help the community, it's hard to turn away. So I would say if you are not selected for this, please um, know that um, very shortly we'll be putting out the um, um, openings for other boards and committees where you could serve the town. And we would welcome any of you to apply for that if you aren't selected in this position. So um, uh, Ms. Conley. Madam Chair, I'd like to suggest that I think uh, the question about what the job actually entails, what the position entails, is really an important one because I, I wouldn't want to appoint someone only to find out that when, when they find out the particulars, including having to kill woodpeckers outside of some <laughs> um, or taking phone calls from other tenants all hours of the day and night, um, that might sway someone one way or the other. So instead of voting on someone who might decide after hearing what the job is, they don't want it. If, if, if people wouldn't mind, if we could just make sure they know what they're getting themselves into, and then we could vote. I think yeah, if I, if I could just add, this is Lorraine, I'm sorry. Yeah. There was a letter sent to all of the tenants in all of the buildings with an outline of what this position is and what is required for position. And there's a copy in your backup. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't read it. No, that's okay. Sorry. Um, I mean, I could go over it a little bit since, uh, well, you know, they, they do receive training provided by the Department of Housing and Community Development. And they'll be meeting with the board to make decisions about the property, whatever comes up in their board meeting, similar to select board except it would be for the properties themselves well i just gave my opinion so okay yeah so, so what i agree I, with I, you is um madam chair can we give kathy demarsh an extra um chance to chime in she's still on and she's I on think, there's no audio or video connection kathy if you can hear us uh, I can see but i can share just because now i know i have the technology um <laughs> Let's see. I mean, you know, do they meet monthly? Is it yeah, this weekly? is the letter that was sent to all of the um, the residents. Um, and it does say that it tell us it talks about what the responsibilities are, that you'll get training from the Department of Housing and Community Development, um, and you partner with the Mel King Institute to get a comprehensive role. So I think you get trained. I doesn't. I don't think it specifically says up front. And then um, let's see. You have to fill out a notice of intent. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm just going to scroll down here. It doesn't say. It doesn't really say like when right. or how often. So I mean, well, it's, most of our board, most boards and committees meet monthly um, and or as needed. So I do not know if this is different. So why don't we do this? So I think everyone has a general idea or they wouldn't have applied, um, but why don't we um, postpone our vote till May 11th? And Kathy, if you can hear us, it's like calling into the dark. Uh, if you can hear us, if we can just have the final parameters, we can send that out to the, to the, the four applicants. And if you change your mind, let us know before the 11th and we'll make our final vote on that. Um, I don't think there's a time restraint on a time crunch on this. We just would like to fulfill that. Is that acceptable to the board and to the applicants? Okay. 
All right, Ellen's been nodding. Just so you're aware, the time commitment is by May 15th. So May 15th, okay, great. So if we do this on our next meeting is the 11th. Um, Lorraine, if you'll, if you'll work with Kathy DeMarsh to just get, um, get that information to these four applicants and then um, and they can inform us if they wish to be considered on the 11th and we'll vote then. And I would, yeah, and I would, I would encourage the applicants also to reach out to some of the current um, Situated Housing Authority board members and um, they should be listed on the website for you all um, to ask them any questions as well. You know, what type of priorities they've been evaluating. Um, so you have a little bit of a stronger idea of what you're stepping into, because I think it's a really important role as um, Ms. Connolly said at the, at the onset of the meeting. So I'm really excited to have tenant representation. I just wanna make sure that um, you folks know what you're signing up for. Yeah, and we appreciate you all raising your hand and, and putting yourself out there. So, okay, well, in two weeks, we will, we will convene on this and um, make sure that we get tenant reps on the, on, the, um, on the Housing Authority Board. Great, thank you, everyone. Appreciate you coming and talking to us. Um, oh, we're behind schedule, I hate that. But we are moving on to our 750, which is to discuss, vote, an emergency sewer connection um, for a parcel on Beaver Dam Road. And we do have our Board of Health Director with us, Mr. Scheel. Um, well, outline this quickly for the board. And we did this, receive all the backup. You um, did receive all the backup. That's so this is a emergency sewer application for 25 Beaver Dam Road. They had a Title V inspection and the system failed. And if you saw the background, the failing of it, you know, there's puddling and a lot of backup in the system. So, I mean, it is an emergency, it's failed. They do have the ability to connect to town sewer and Title V says that if they have the ability to connect and it's in a system in failure that they should connect and it needs your approval. Okay, so the original request is to tie through a neighbor's property into this, the existing sewer line? Yes. Or a spaghetti line, okay. And this and is- it would be gravity, And it would be gravity fed. Okay, and the cost obviously would be borne by the resident. Yes. And this has been reviewed by the sewer committee, sewer department. I well. spoke with DPW Commissioner Kevin this, uh, af this afternoon about it. Okay. He, um, Sean went by earlier today, I believe, and they had no issues. Okay. We did receive all the background, um, backup information. Um, the alternative for this resident is to dig up their yard and put in a new septic system that would have to be elevated significantly, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, does the board have any questions about this? Uh, Mr. Vignani? Yeah, I just have a comment. Um, I, I completely support this. And we've talked about this in the budget for the sewer department for years. This has got to be a component of our ongoing plans of adding people on, a, on existing infrastructure. Um, they, they have to pay the hookup fees anyways. There's no expense to it. And it's, it is, you know, it's one way that we're gonna raise money other than just keep raising the rates for the, um, for the sewer treatment plant. So um, anyone that falls into these criteria have needs, their, their, tech, their uh, system has failed. And if they have the access to the, to the um, sewer system, I would grant it to them. And I would add just the, the impact on the aesthetics of the community when you have all these mounds and stuff is, is not very desirable. Um, so uh, are there other questions or comments from the board on this matter? All right, I think Mr. Goodrich. Well, I just, I think there were some correspondence from um, folks from North Situate, uh, but uh, I still support this because as, as Tony said, getting that, um, you know, understand that long-term plan to get that uh, revenue in from getting these folks on those lines is going to be critical for us to finish that other to finish that job to make sure we can sewer north situate. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly how close to the water this is, 25 Beaver Dam. Um, no, I, I I fully support it. Um, and in that even in that larger scope of understanding the importance of north situate. 
Yeah, this property is located almost to Jericho Road, so it's it's closer to it's close to the harbor. Um, we did just Mr. Goodrich is referencing. We did receive a letter late today from the Friends of North Situate, which will be included in correspondence for the board next meeting, um, as it came in today. Um, but I will note that you know one-off connections um, will have very little impact on our ability to sewer North Situate and. Um, they cannot be ceased, um, in my opinion, they cannot be ceased um, because they have higher value in other areas, uh, income and reserve and um, conservation. So we're working on both. Yes, Mr. Vignani. Yeah, I just want to clarify my comments so it doesn't get misunderstood. Um, although I do support these, it is in a limited capacity. We really don't have to add too many a year to really impact the budget. You know, it, I, Nancy, what's the number? Like 16,000, I think, for a hookup, somewhere around that. So, you know, if you do 10 or 20 a year, it has a huge impact on our budget, but really doesn't have a huge impact on the capacity of the sewer um, system. So um, that's, that's what I was referring to before. Thank you for that clar clarification. Uh, yeah, no, that's good. Great, any other questions or comments? Drew, did you wanna add anything? No. Okay. okay. Um, if everyone is satisfied with the application, is somebody willing to make a motion? Sure. Move to approve an emergency sewer connection for 25 Beaver Dam Road pending connection agreement with the Department of Public Works. Moved by Ms. Kern. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Connolly. Seeing any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Sorry. Mr. Goodrich. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, uh, that motion carries 5-0. Um, do you know what the construction, when they'll be able to do that, Drew, or is that to be determined? I'm not sure when they're going to start. I mean, I don't know if Ed wants to <clears throat> a prediction on it, Ed, or are you, I don't know if he can unmute himself or not. He's waving. <laughs> No, oh, it's going to be done as soon as possible. Tomorrow. Oh. As soon as possible. As soon as possible, we'd like to start. Okay. So I apologize. I did not realize you were on the call. I would have asked if you had any comments. <laughs> but we're done and you got it. So yeah. <laughs> we're, just, we're just thrilled for the support from the select board and uh, we appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much. That's a luck. It's been you. Thank you. All righty. I know that our DPW director will say, don't mess up his road. <laughs> um great okay well good glad we could uh, we could help with that great um great all right we will move on um to our eight o'clock which is the outdoor entertainment permit for the united methodist church first friday fish fries which i'm delighted to know they're coming back <laughs> and up oh, robert is here if you wouldn't i'm sorry we're late um, if you wouldn't mind just giving your name and address and telling us what the church is planning this year. Robert Amway at 44 Border Street, and I'm representing Harvard United Methodist Church. Um, two years ago, you approved an outdoor um, entertainment permit for us to have live music um, to accompany our Friday night fish fries. Uh, they were very successful. We um, uh, fed over 150 people and it was uh, received very well by the community. We want to keep that up. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't do it last year because of the COVID, um, but we will follow all COVID guidelines uh, by the, the township, the state um, that are in effect at the time. We have two planned. We originally had thought we'd have one in June, the first Friday of June, but that coincides with high school graduation. And that's going to affect uh, several of the people that are working. So we're going to cancel that one, but we hope to do it in on July 2nd and September 3rd, the first Fridays of those months. Um, the Any proceeds from those fish fries are turned right back to the community. Um, local charities are, are funded uh, partially by us um, with the proceeds from the, the fries. And if there, are there any questions or anything I can address? Um, 
Yes, so so the motion will be amended, um, and obviously the COVID is the most important thing. Um, that those have to be um, followed. Um, I just just so you know, that following your um, our discussion vote on this matter, the e, our economic development commission is going to report on plans for the summer, and I think that's going to be a little more robust than just one first Friday. So um, you might want to stick around and hear that conversation as well. Um, I personally really miss them, so I'm excited. Um, are there questions from the, um, the board? Uh, how are you gonna control numbers of people? I mean, let's say you can only have whatever it is. I think it's, what did Jim just say? 200 after what date? Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's a limit of number of people. How are you gonna control that? We will control that by the amount of food that we have available. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. We have a target of we served about 150 meals um, two years ago, so that that's what we're targeting now. Okay. Uh, questions from the board? Everyone? Oh, nope, I think it's great. Four of it. Um, good. Well, that was that was simple. So we did get all of the backup. You have a track record, and um, it is. Certainly a welcome addition for families in the harbor during um, during First Friday. So if um, he noted that the date June fourth uh, has been removed, would someone like to make a motion? Okay. Move to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to Robert Amwig and the Harbor United Methodist Church at fifty five First Parish Road for First Friday fish fry dinners. <laughs> Beginning is it beginning July second through September third? Is that just what we're July saying? July second and September third. Oh, just those two nights. Okay. Well, uh, I don't July know if you. Just I'm sorry. a little promotion. In August, the first Friday of August, the, the church has held a pie social for many oh. years. So that's over. There's overwhelming support by the community for it, <laughs> and I encourage you to uh, to come. So noted. It's kind of the uh, highlight so of my summer, just so you know. <laughs> July 2nd and September 3rd, each fish fry will take place between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. and will be accompanied by a musician performing live music. Okay. Um, so we have a motion by Ms. Curran. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Connolly. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes, do you love a good fish fry? <laughs> the motion carries you enthusiastically 5-0. Uh, good luck. I, um, yeah, I encourage you to stick around because the next presentation is um, exactly on how we're gonna get folks down in the harbor. Um, and great, and we look thank forward- Thank you very much. All right, thank you for staying, staying with us this late. Sorry to be late. Thank you. Um, all right, so we do have our, our 805 update from the EDC. I just want to ask the board, does anyone want this, the presentation, I did get a preview and the presentation's awesome. I just want to know if the board wants to take a quick break. We've been sitting for two hours or would you like to do that after this, um, the next two items? Oh, nobody's jumping up and down, all right. Um, so we do have Suda Pisa with us. She is the chair of the EDC, as you well know, and she's going to update us on both the visitor center and on the spring summer economic recovery. And Bill Carey is here and already taking control of our screen. So, <laughs> um, if you I just didn't want to be late. So. I love it. Introduce yourselves to the board and, um, and, and we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, um, Karen. Thanks very much. Um, so uh, first I'll start with a, an update with EDC. And um, we've had a busy year overall, very productive year, despite what's been going on in the world. Um, we started with the launch of Situate Loves Local, of course, and worked with the Situate Chamber uh, to develop ways to support local businesses um, during the pandemic. And as everyone knows, the pandemic has presented many, many challenges to the businesses and the hospitality community in Situate. So, um, we continue to develop strong working relationships with, um, with, with the business association and, and assist them in any way that we can. We've worked pretty much every week meeting with the um, Harbor Businesses, uh, their association, 
So those strong relationships are really the result of many people working together towards the same goal of an improved um, local economy. Staying engaged uh, with the business community really has been a focus of EDC for as long as I've been there. So we believe it's the key to recovery and an improved vision. So um, the Harbor Business Association has a nice lineup of activities. And now I'm gonna add the fish fry and the pie, um, the pie Fridays um, to uh, lots of activities and offerings for the spring and summer months. Um, we've been helping them with some costs associated with new lighting, marketing, and, and a few more uh, things that we need to uh, get approved like benches and chairs, seating, things like that. Uh, beautification, I see they're on the agenda as well. They have been very generous with their time and money to the harbor merchants um, to fund uh, new self-watering potted plants along Front Street. They're, they're, they all look beautiful. Um, First Fridays will begin in May and possibly be expanded to every Friday during the summer. They just wanted to play it by ear. Um, they're doing a great job of being very conscious of the guidelines, but they'll, um, they're well on their way to a successful summer season. And I'm sure the news today about the expansion in, in um, the guidelines is really great news for, for all of these small businesses. And um, I'm, I'm excited for them. I, I think they probably will end up doing every Friday if they can um, manage it, but they're, on Thursday evenings, there'll be um, music in the, at the bandstand. Fridays, we're hoping that there'll be first Fridays every Friday. Saturday, we're hoping the restaurants will, um, you know, offer some specials to draw people in. Um, and then Sunday, they generally say is a family family day down the harbor, so they're working on some some, some things to to attract more families down there. So, in North Situate, uh, we're happy to have sponsored the new banners with the friends of North Situate, and of course, we're thrilled that the rezoning of North Situate passed at town meeting. Um, North Stitchwood Business Association is pulling together with quite a few new businesses in, in that, um, that are, they're doing very well. In fact, there, there isn't an empty storefront in North Stitchwood, which I didn't think I would be able to say that um, at this point. Um, we are hopeful that the sewer plan, uh, whether in the town or regional, will come to fruition in the near future. Um, in the meantime, they are active and working hard to attract business uh, to the area. They're regrouping as a business association. And I really look and consider North Situate as the little engine that could. They are full of optimism and hard work uh, on the part of all of those business owners. So for people who are not shopping in North Situate, please go by and support those businesses. They're, they're really a great group of owners. Um, Greenbush uh, will be coming online in the next year or so. We have Matt Alder on, as a liaison from Untold Brewery to help keep an eye on business in that district. And I see with the, um, with the project that was approved tonight, that'll be, that'll be great. So our biggest project this year has been Situate Visitor Center. Uh, we formed a subcommittee to explore the idea and have been working steadily at it since last fall, every week for a couple of hours, um, meeting by Zoom. I've invited three members of the committee uh, to join us tonight to give an overview. Um, of the project and and to present it to you and, and also the, the residents of Situate. I know these meetings are recorded and any people can watch them anytime. So we really want to get the word out. The, the plan has changed somewhat since I first presented to you like last fall. Um, some of you sat in on some of the committee, committee meetings, but I thought it would be good to, you know, show everyone where we're at right now. The overall mission of the Visitor Center remains the same as I stated the last time, which is to promote Situate as a travel destination, improve the quality and the quantity of the visitor experience and which will result in the boost to the local economy. The biggest change since I was here last is that the Visitor Center is virtual. We are discussing, um, discussing to discuss uh, in 2022, I would say, about a possible brick and mortar location. Um, we didn't, we wanted to get the thing up and running before um, we got into a, a brick and mortar commitment. Um, we've learned quite a bit through Situate Loves Local about just how much support is needed 
for our small business community to survive, not, not only now, but even without a pandemic. Um, understanding that drove us to determine that a viable center could be the engine that drives us towards a revitalized economy. Um, small business is the backbone, of course, and the character of Situate. And with the right support, uh, we feel that the visitor center can add tremendous um, value to our community. And all indicators point to increased visitation uh, and people are ready to get out, as everyone is saying, translates to increased patronage of local businesses. And that in turn adds to the town's tax income base, which is one of the big things that we talk about at EDC. So the center will not be funded by property ta taxpayers. Uh, it will generate revenue through advertisements, merchandise sales, private grants, and contributions as well as federal grants, state and federal grants. Um, we filed for a nonprofit 5013C status, appointed a board of directors, approved bylaws, established an advisory committee, and website is in development. We are aiming for a mid-June launch. We expect to authorize a three to five year strategic plan in 2022. We've had conversations with uh, Patrick Kearney, who has filed a house amendment in support of the center and Patrick O'Connor, who both continue to research uh, funding sources. Uh, we've also connected with the Situ Chamber and the South Shore Chamber of Commerce who will have involvement in the project. We've joined C Plymouth uh, who have been extremely helpful um, in, in the formation of our group. Um, we're collaborating with Linda Ferguson to combine her work with the C Situate branding that the town has already uh, developed. So we're, we're gonna link into that. Um, and Secretary Mike Keneally has expressed interest in attending uh, one of our meetings to learn more about the project. So we have lots of growing support and I'm sure we're gonna have your support too as, as I've heard from many of you. So we've built the framework and the group and the website. Uh, the site is being designed to eventually incorporate surrounding towns so it can become a regional visitor center, which we believe will um, have be a tremendous asset for both the South Shore, all of the South Shore and also attract additional funding. So uh, now we're focused on promoting business in situate situate only right now. So we're hopeful there will be engagement with other towns in the future as we move um, into the, uh, you know, a different growth section of uh, a phase of, of this project. Our strategic plan will help us um, to sort of chart that course. Um, as a group, we recognize in our understanding that we, that we recognize the gaps in our understanding and limited perspective. In the coming months, we're planning an outreach campaign to engage and embrace the heritage and diverse makeup of the community. So the Visitor Center is really one part of many needed endeavors by community groups to help our town. Uh, we feel that the timing of the initiative couldn't be better. Uh, every day we get more and more support and realize that there are funds around to help us um, become established and really be a very strong um, support organization for the for town's businesses. Um, we believe in working with the community through volunteering, discussing and making constructive suggestions and supporting local businesses through buying local. Um, so the Visitor Center Board and Advisory Board have chosen to focus on the future um, toward a positive period of sustained but controlled growth for Situate and we are definitely up for the challenge. We have a great group of people so right now I'm going to ask Gina, I know we have um, we're very limited time. So we're, we're doing this on the uh, fast track. Um, we tend to go on and on about the visitor center. So um, I'm going to ask Gina uh, Savage who heads up the advisory board and then Bill Carey and Brenda O'Connor who both are board members of the visitor center to give you a quick PowerPoint presentation and then we can answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Sue. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for those I haven't met, I am Gina Savage. I am the chair of the advisory board, and I'm also serving in my second term on the Town of Situate Economic Development Commission. I was very happy when Sue pulled me into this project, and we are already making great progress. So the advisory board we envision as the think tank of the nonprofit board of directors. The nonprofit board can only consist of a certain amount of people that will vote on all the important decisions for the nonprofit. So the advisory board is a group of 
non-voting members that essentially advises in the name of the group, um, the board of directors on what we need to focus on when it comes to networking, increasing awareness for this important initiative, planning for public presentations such as this one, and also scoping out grant and funding opportunities. At the moment, the advisory board is comprised of community leaders who serve in the Massachusetts State House, the South Shore Chamber of Commerce, Citroën Chamber of Commerce, the Citroën Harbor Merchants Association, and we also have one of the Plymouth County Commissioners on board, Jared Valenzola. Related to that, Jared also hosts a radio show, The JV Team with Jared Valenzola on 95.9 WATD, and we were lucky enough to preview the Citroën Visitor Center with a larger radio audience on April 14th. We have received a lot of positive feedback, so I see that as already amazing progress the advisory board and the nonprofit is making in reaching those audiences. We've also started a social media marketing campaign. We've launched a Facebook and Instagram page and already have accumulated a couple hundred followers. We are also talking with other newspapers, local newspapers, just trying to get the word out there in any way that we possibly can. We presented to the EDC last night and we also talked with the C Plymouth group this morning during a networking event to give them an update on our progress with the nonprofit status, the website being set up, and the different people that we've been getting on board for this project. The advisory board hosts bi-weekly meetings on Monday nights at 5.30 via Zoom. As Sue mentioned, we've hosted a few guest speakers, including Representative Patrick Kearney and Patrick O'Connor. We've also been blessed with the presence of Karen Canfield from this very select board, as well as Corey Evans from the Cohasset Select Board. So it's really great to have all of that local support right up front. For upcoming meetings, tomorrow morning, me and Sue are going to be meeting with Lara Brait, who's the Executive Director of the Marshfield Chamber of Commerce. They recently received funding for their Open for Business campaign, and we're hoping that the Situate Visitor Center can work in conjunction with them to really see how that can affect our local communities because the, adverti the advertising funding was for both Marshfield and Situate, so we thought that would be a perfect project to jump on. On May 10th, we are also going to be hosting the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Both senior planner Raul Gonzalez and Betsy Cowan-Neptune, who is the Chief of Economic Development and focuses in the South Shore area, are going to be joining us. We are planning on using that meeting to have the advisory board discuss our project with MAPC and see what types of funding is out there and also how we can best position ourselves for funding that will be coming up either later this year or next year. Also, as Sue had stated, we are very happy that Secretary Mike Keneally is interested in meeting with us, and we are looking forward to any and, other, any and all other opportunities to get this idea out there, hear what people have to say about it, and really serve as that think tank for the advisory board, or for the nonprofit board. Our focus for the advisory board truly is making connections. So thank you very much for listening to my little spiel, and I'm gonna turn this over to Brenda and Bill. All right, uh, Brenda, did you want to say a few words to kind of kick things off? Are you on mute, Brenda? Brenda, you're muted, honey. Hold on. I'll go ahead and I can go ahead and get get us started. And uh, she's ready. Oh, okay. okay. Excellent. Sorry about that. Um, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because uh, the people we've discussed this with on the select board have all been uh, very enthusiastic in su support of this. Um, we have been studying the research uh, and there has been much out there on what's going to happen to tourism once uh, the pandemic restrictions are lifted. And it's been very interesting. There is a wanderlust and people are waiting to burst forth in freedom. Uh, and they have expressed that they would prefer to drive rather than fly. They want to go to small towns rather than cities. They um, want, uh, rather than inside activities, they want a variety of activities, some family centered, um, and they want not just recreational, but uh, historical or educational activities. And Situate is perfectly situated to capitalize on this post lockdown travel boom. We have indoor and outdoor recreational activities available year round. We have a magnificent harbor. 
that people arrived to visit our town in the harbor as well as going to view it and playing with it in it. We have historical sites and I'm sure people are saying, oh my God, she's gonna say it again. Uh, we have one of the greatest stories that we really need to, to uh, expand on and shout to the world. We had two teenage girls who took on the biggest, most important uh, naval force in the world at the time and they beat them. And we need to really publicize this. Uh, I think if you have a, a park, as has been suggested at Pier 44, I think there should be statues of Abigail and Rebecca Bates there. And we should shout that uh, story all over. We have the Maritime and Marcy Museum, which is exquisite. Uh, it tells the story of uh, maritime history and some of our immigration history. We have the South Shore Brewery Trail, which is fun for visitors to go on and locals to enjoy too. We have the Irish Heritage Trail, which originated in Situate and is headquartered in Situate and is supported by the Irish government through their diaspora grant program. We have annual celebrations, parades, festivals, uh, heritage, culture, arts. We have the Rose Walk private golf, public golf course, and we have outstanding restaurants. And this morning's catch can be on the menu this evening, especially now with uh, the new processing plant in town. We have charming shops, galleries, we have it all. And we have a variety of uh, places to stay. The inn, plus B&Bs, plus cottage rentals, et cetera. We learned a lot of lessons during this lockdown and we've accomplished much. One of the things that uh, we learned is hugely successful and we don't need a lockdown to do it is take out Tuesdays. This I think families look forward to, restaurants look forward to and was very successful. We learned to better utilize our outdoor space for living and for dining. And the increase of e-commerce and cashless payments uh, was important. We had uh, an emphasis on buying local, using local, celebrating local. The, uh, and the accomplishments, many have, been, have already been mentioned, the Sea Situate Virtual Pocket Guide, which will be available on the uh, website through uh, Linda's generosity. Uh, we established uh, the Visitor Center of 501C3 nonprofit, and that should be issued by this June. We've elected our nonprofit board. We have our bylaws and everything. But there's one thing I do want to just mention, and that is tourism pays. The return on the investment, I have a few examples. The first is Colorado. The tourism office spent $8.5 million on marketing from 20, uh, 2019 to 2020. And they received in return $2.3 million, uh, $2 million visitors who spent 3.85 billion, that's not a typo, it's billion mm -hmm. dollars. And of that 210 million was in tax receipts. So 210 million is a lot in tax receipts, but just think 3.85 billion was generated. Who got that? The businesses, the local businesses that were supported through tourism. In 2019, New York invested 70 million in tourism with a return of 105 billion to the state's economy. And Oregon realizes a return of 157 in new visitor spending and $8 in state and local taxes for every $1 allotted to travel Oregon. So for every dollar, they bring back seven. So this is something that is going to be uh, fulfill our mission of helping the economy of Situate and the local businesses. And now Bill has the charts to show you the nuts and bolts of how this is done. Thank you very much, Brenda. So um, this this one is the one that still kind of shocks me the most. Um, we we had a, a, a lot of good pre-pandemic information from the State uh, uh, Bureau of Travel and Tourism. 
Um, tourism is number one in, in Plymouth County, yet despite that, um, we <laughs> it, it employs less than 1% of our, our county residents. Um, I think this just kind of still blows my mind that, um, you know, we, it, local jobs are, are, you know, I think, uh, uh, badly needed, and I think travel and tourism is, is an area where we've got you know tremendous upside to grow. Uh, in addition, also pre-pandemic, Plymouth County was was lagging pretty far behind uh, its peers. I say way far far behind its peers in terms of uh, state and local tax receipts on a per capita basis. Um, the Berkshires bring in about three times per person that we do. Uh, Middlesex and Norfolk are ahead of us, so I think uh, you know it, it's there's. Um, again, a, a ton of uh, room to improve in terms of where the, the county stands, especially given uh, the fantastic history we have and the, the you know, numerous sites and the seaside locations. It's, um, you know, I think, again, a, a huge opportunity that we're, we're missing. And then specifically for Situate, um, working with Nancy Holt in the, in the treasurer's office, I think the, the meals tax revenue tells probably the best story where, again, even our most optimistic projections are, are forecasting about a 30% drop in terms of uh, restaurant revenue and traffic. Uh, and I think that the fact that it wasn't worse uh, speaks really highly of, of some of the efforts like, you know, Takeout Tuesday, the Situate Loves Local efforts and all the other different uh, initiatives aimed at, at trying to, to, you know, support our, our you know, local restaurants. Um, the other data showing that the impact of COVID has been pretty hard to find, but I think this gives us a pretty good idea of just how, how hard hit the town has been. So, um, as uh, as you know, as, as Brendan and Sue have mentioned, uh, and and Gina, we we started to put together a strategic plan, uh, creating a, vi a vision for what we want the Situ Visitor Center to be, uh, with three three kind of you know key uh, goals or, or or planks: promoting Situ as a travel destination, uh, improving the visitor experience, and boosting the local economy. So to the to then I'm not going to read the whole slide, but uh, we have. Plenty of things uh, to do ahead of us, but uh, but feel like we've also got off, got to a, or gotten off to a really strong start uh, in in terms of you know being able to, to actually deliver on this this vision. So uh, as as others have mentioned, uh, a lot of accomplishments so far. Um, I think the the probably the, the best part is that the website is uh, underway in construction. Uh, the wireframe has been built, and we're populating it with content as we speak. So. Um, so fingers crossed for that that mid June launch. Uh, we've you know done a lot of the nuts and bolts type of work, blocking and tackling. Uh, in addition, we've been uh, partnering with C Plymouth, and I think that's actually um, going to be a really uh, really promising partnership heading forward with what they can provide to us and, and to other uh, you know, um, local groups. And Bill, is that going to be linked off the town website as well? Uh, it's a great question. We've we've actually reserved a, a bunch of different URLs. So I think um, big thanks to Bill Blake for uh, having the foresight to go grab a, a lot of good, you know, in, internet real estate as far as the South Shore goes. Um, I think we could certainly pr uh, provide a link from from the town website. Uh, I think we we um, will also be you know making sure that we can be found independently, uh, you know, easily and, and actually you know put some uh, marketing dollars behind it as well. Uh, our budget, the big, big item this year was the the, the construction of the website uh, with Sproling Interactive. And then thanks to the EDC, I think we're we're in very good shape to uh, to execute on that, as well as take care of some of the you know all the administrative nuts and bolts as well. Um, excuse me, uh, Mara. I can sort of answer that. The the as far as connecting to C Situate and the town, so EDC has a page um, and which isn't very well um, updated all the time because I don't have anybody at EDC to do it. But um, our plan is, our tentative plan is to link that page, which will link to the town website. So the Situate Visitor Center site will have a link to town of Situate, yes. But we want to we want to update that C Situate page on a on a regular basis so that people really can pick up on that and that that connection with C Situate C Situate S E A S E E it'll be all S E A so Linda has agreed to work with us on that which is we're very happy about I don't know if you saw what she had she promote she she built a 
um, uh, a platform basically with an app and we are trying to convert all that to SEA situation. I hope that answered your question. It does, thank you. All right. Um, it's okay. I, I think in the interest of time, we'll try to move things along quickly. Um, not Again, not gonna read every part of this, but I think what we, we, we're all acutely aware of what we want to deliver and, and what all of our constituents value, you know, between the, you know, the partners with, um, Groups like the Historical Society and the, and the town um, are, you know, kind of larger stakeholder group with local businesses and local governments, and then finally the guests and, and what they're looking for. And so um, we'll be, you know, coming up developing metrics to track all of these and to be as transparent as possible as we as we get things started. Um, so Brenda already talked to this. We've got some, you know, excellent case studies of the type of ROI that uh, that other um, tourism promotion events have. Uh, have generated so you know fingers crossed uh, if we can get a, even a fraction of that so um next steps i think we've we, we're actually in pretty good shape as far as funding goes but we know there's there's more out there and there's potentially plenty of things that we could do with it um the advisory board has uh, is off and running and um you know has been uh been you know uh, delivering you know from the from the get-go um, we will start planning for a brick and mortar location. I think it's, you know, very much TBD in terms of timing, uh, and the visitor, the virtual visitor center was clearly what we thought we could get done now and, and help everyone start to recover in this, this, you know, this key summer. And then eventually once we've got things up and running for situate, uh, we've got the ability to expand across the South shore. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, any other questions or comments? Great, thank you everyone so much for um, for coming in and updating us. Um, I know I've been I've been lucky enough to to get previews of a lot of this, um, and I know the board's going to ask some questions. But I just want to commend this group because you, you you have a clear vision of what you want to accomplish. You've got an organized and dedicated team to make it happen, and you have a plan that is actually grounded in in research and in um, you know, in, in, in achievability, you know, looking for partners and grant opportunities and all of those things. And I, I did see a preview of this earlier, I think last week, you know, I don't remember, it's all a blur now. And I said that I wanted to just bottle all of that and ask everyone that presents to us to do that much work because um, I think it's very successful. And um, you're not only supporting recovery that we have to, to deal with in the pandemic, you're setting the foundation that will really redefine how people in the region look at our community as a destination. So I'm I'm over the top excited about this for you and, and so supportive of this. Um, just one distinction I want to make is the visitor center as they presented is going to be set up as a 501c. So it is not part of the town of Situate. It is definitely supported and, and enhanced by the work of our EDC, but they'll be there their own little bird flying off to do this. And, um, and I personally am very excited to see um, where this leads. I think it dovetails into so many other things that are going on. Um, and I, I appreciate that uh, connectivity of work. So I know a lot about it. So I'm gonna ask my board if they have any questions or comments about the presentation. Ms. Conley. Uh, first of all, thank you. What a professional group of people, what a professional uh, presentation. It's really impressive. Um, in a lot of places, they actually pay people to do this. So um, thank you. I just have one suggestion, and that is, has anyone from the Visitor Center been in touch with the Massachusetts Film Bureau? The reason I ask is because, um, you know, when people see not just movies, but TV shows, advertising, uh, commercials, et cetera. Um, it sometimes prompts them to say, I wanna to go to see where the Witches of Eastwick was filmed. And I'm not suggesting that you guys are the people who are gonna be out trying to pitch the film bureau, but just to get sort of, make sure that there's some connection made um, between this group and the film bureau. Um, it's an indirect way to reach people, but it's, I don't know that anyone else in town is doing it. So uh, that's a great suggestion. Karen, it's it's interesting you say that because we are meeting today with C Plymouth 
one of the members uh, started a company called um, uh, Plymouth, I think it's called Plymouth Rock Studios. And um, they have a YouTube channel. And this is news to my group right now because I'm just saying for the first time, but I think it's probably would make sense for us to do a YouTube channel um, because that's where everybody goes to get information now. Um, like, you know, like this meeting will be on YouTube. So yeah, I think that's in the future for sure. Thank you for that suggestion. Could I ask Jim Boudreaux, does, is there anyone in town hall who is in touch with the film bureau at all? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. So just a suggestion that just getting on their radar screen could be very useful. Thank you again. I'm sure Gina will be on it tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we can reach out to Katie Baxter as well. Yeah. Right. You might know them. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, and I know Kyle's on, on this call, so he's, I'm sure, scribbling notes right now, Kyle. <laughs> You're not taking out your notebook. <laughs> yeah, Maura, did you have your finger up? Yeah, I just a couple of comments. Um, it, fabulous work. So I was very excited last night when I read through your documents. So thank you. Yeah. Um, loved all that the detail. Um, can we get a listing of who's on the advisory board? You know, there was a lot of structure that was organized, but no, no names, no organization. Um, mm -hmm. Because just because of your, your, your name, right? There's going to be a lot of assumptions that you are town um, operate, you know, operate under the town's auspices, if you will. Um, so that would be great. Um, love the work that you did. And then the other thing is, can you Clarify the connection between EDC and the nonprofit. You know, is it just a joint partnership? Are monies exchanging? I'm just curious what the interaction is financially. So, um, so the visitor center subcommittee came out of EDC, and um, as we were planning that with that group we realized that that was probably the best way to go. So as Karen said earlier, Karen Canfield said earlier, um, it will detach from the mothership. Um, it, is, it is already detached. Um, so the, the visitor center is independent of, of EDC now. It's just that there's an overlap in people because we started it. So. As I said, Jean is on EDC, and um, of course I'm on EDC. So, so now the visitor center has come to EDC for some seed money, and that's what we talked about last night. The um, Bill Blake, uh, the uh, corporation that was started. Bill Blake is the president. Uh, Bill Carey is the treasurer, and Judy, um, her last name is slipping my mind Car right Carey now. I'm sorry to say uh is the uh clerk uh and through this now we are a non-profit organization and we are eligible i don't know why i'm talking about this bill is the expert <laughs> i am not so you, I'm you go with it right you can run with it you're good uh, but yeah we can definitely provide a, a listing of everyone on both the 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 board as well as the advisory committee that that's not a problem i think we yeah. That, that'd be great. And my only last comment, sorry guys, is um, I'm, I think, pretty well known, a big proponent of putting some sort of visitor center down in the Citroen Harbor community building as we start to look at that moving forward. So I would love for you to think about what does that mean for space or needs that, that you need? So when our committee comes together, that we're thinking now, right? What does that look like? Is it 10 by 12, what, what is that? And, and what are those needs? Um, that's my personal opinion. That hasn't been voted on by the rest of the board, but just wanted to get it out there um, so you can think about it. So thanks so much. It, great, great work and so exciting. I can't, I love the data that you shared. It was really interesting. A lot of opportunity. Thank you. So one thing Thank you, on the financing piece, Mara, that I don't think anyone mentioned is, so EDC last night had the same presentation and did vote to provide seed money to complete the website pending Mr. Boudreaux's approval of the appropriation. Correct. So that's where that money comes from. And then I think the bulk of the funding Correct. is gonna come from, 
advertisers and grants and other um, places. So Jim and Nancy are just double checking the um, legality of doing that, right? Yeah, well, we we had a conversation with Jim. We gave him a similar um, presentation a couple of weeks ago just to make sure that it falls under our mission. Um, and I believe um, I believe it does. So we'll be talking to Jim later this week. Yeah. Great. Good. Um, any other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Vignani, you're muted. So. Thank you. First of all, I just want to congratulate you guys. What a, what a great presentation. So thorough, so professional, as Karen mentioned, and really touches on a lot of things that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, Brenda and I went and looked at the uh, visitor center and, uh, and Ireland and, and thought it was so impressive there. Um, uh, just to follow up on, on one question that I had during the presentation that more kind of brought up on, you know, if we are making a situate visitor center, is there some, should there be some affiliation with the town government of Situate. Um, so I, I'm just wondering how, how that's gonna go moving forward, you know, and, and I'm not really thinking now, but I'm thinking 20 years from now when all of a sudden something may change and maybe the, the perspective of a group that's going in there running the Situate, um, you know, center may not align with what the town is really trying to look for. And, and what's the relationship moving forward with that? Um, and just so we make sure that everyone's goals are, are aligned, you know, we certainly love all the initiatives and certainly coming out of COVID here, all the, the business opportunities and, and, and bringing tourism. And actually, before I forget, um, Karen brought up the Film Association probably about five or six years ago. We did a film spot for um, the Discover Channel mm -hmm. and, and we did a video um, that promoted Situate and ran on on the Discover Channel a couple of times and, and some advertising. So I'm sure that's available also where we talked about the benefits of Situate that can be um, incorporated in, in this as well. Um, but that, that was my one thought. Okay, we you know, all of a sudden there's a, a nonprofit running the town of Situate Visitor Center that is deciding that they want to, you know, do something that maybe the town really isn't completely in support of. Something crazy. Yes, yes. One of the um, things that uh, one of the things we, uh, one of the reasons why we don't, I'm concentrating on a brick, brick, um, brick and mortar right now is because there are so many unknowns. What we are really trying to do is get up and running and have the economic impact this summer. There are a lot of things that we have to discuss and are open to discussing that we are just putting aside for the moment while we do the important business of making an economic impact this summer. Um, but in the winter, the situation is kind of quiet and we can talk a lot in the winter about what the future is and what requirements yeah. we need to have. I think Tony, it's important think that in the, in the 501c3's mission that that's laid out you know, up front with what the relationship is. So like I said, 25 years from now, there's not a visitor center that is you know doing Running something other, yeah, yeah doing yeah. something other than what all of us wanted to do yeah um, um well and also just tony, to add on that I, tony i mean if i'm sorry i just want to add on that i apologize sue um that's okay you know we've seen many nonprofits in town start with the greatest of intentions um and i i go back to you know the early the late 90s early 90s on oc right situ education organization that did wonderful work for years and then it fizzled because they couldn't find the same caliber of people that shared that initial mission. So I almost think the visitor center ultimately will be more protected if it eventually is aligned closer with town government uh, because you'll, you'll have that longevity built into it. That makes sense. So ultimately. that was I'm not saying right now, I'm saying one of the first conversations we actually had, and I, I can't remember, I, I may have been with Karen Canfield, is a couple of months ago about how this all lines up. And, and we've used, again, we've used Sea Plymouth, we look at um, Salem, we look at all of these other cities and towns that have visitor centers and, and what is their connection to the town. And usually they are set up as a 5013C independent of the town, but there is a connection. Um, C. Plymouth is, is somewhat funded by 
Plymouth. Um, Salem is some, you know, is is somewhat funded by, and so they and they may hold a seat, um, you know, on on the board. But in our case, we're 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 envisioning the advisory board as sort of a feeder to to the board, um, so that we can keep that enthusiasm going. But yes, we still have a lot to do. But we do know that the visitor centers in other parts of the state and the region are, are independent. We just need to figure out how we make that connection. So there's no, so there's a continuity in goals um, for, for both the, the town and the visitor center. I'm, I'm pretty sure we can make that happen officially. We just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. That, those are good points. You might wanna think about making a permanent position either the, the whoever's the chair of the EDC for the town or a member of the board or something is on the advisory yeah. just to make sure yeah. that those connections are there. Um, yeah. But I, I, I have confidence you guys will figure it out. Is Plymouth, did you say Plymouth is separate as well, right? It's its own little. Plymouth is separate, right. Yeah. A lot of towns will do this, you know, through their chambers or whatever. I mean, there's different avenues. So and the, the work, the homework you guys have done, I have no doubt that, I mean, I think Tony's comments are exactly right. Let's just make sure we don't set us up to um, right. not have this sustained because I think the legs on this could be live all of us, so. <laughs> well, I mean, Brenda has agreed to stay for 25 years to make sure that the thing is running. Mm -hmm. But Sue, Wait, you, you mentioned be. exactly what I was thinking. You know, it, it, there's, as you start thinking about the formation of the 501c, maybe there is a board spot for the chairman of the board of selectmen yep. or for, or, and yep. a member of the EDC, or just so. The, or the town or administrator. Yeah, yeah, even. Exactly, yeah. Some, somewhere along the yep. lines there, because yep. Yep. I know at some point in time, funding is gonna be, you know, it already is. The town's already funding this through EDC. Yep. And mm -hmm. in the future, they're going to need more funding because they're going to need to buy something, or they're going to need something, and and this is going to be a source right. of of support. And, and maybe would be maybe we'd be partnering with a town building. Who knows? Yeah, it might exactly. be the the tenant. Right. Right. So yeah, we always want to make sure that relationship is strong. Right. Great. So that's that's my only thoughts, and I think I think it's just great work, and I think I hope that it really jump starts, you know, what we need to, to have happen in, in our local economy, yep. so. Great. Yeah, thank you. All right, well, we are running way behind schedule, but way. I didn't want to cut this conversation short because I think the, the manpower invested in this operation is great. And I'm glad the board had a chance to get the presentation and we are going to steal Gina and make her do all the presentations from now on. Um, and <laughs> Bill, <laughs> no offense to you, uh, Sue, but the, I love PowerPoints. Um, yeah. So with that, I know that Siska, our next is to talk about beautification, which dovetails into this conversation that we started about what's gonna happen this summer. So if, if you would all agree, I'd like to turn it over to our beautification to talk about um, how that's going to support our recovery this time. I, I think that's what you're gonna talk about. Yes, we, we actually have two parts. Uh, Donna Bangert has been in charge of our um, May 1st uh, Ship Shape Day, and mm -hmm. she's going to do a very brief presentation, and then I'll be talking about some of the new initiatives that the um, Beautification Commission has that tie in with the economic development uh, folks. Okay, that's true. It's very wow. brief. Right, we will listen to Donna and we always will do what Donna says on Ship Shape Day because she's a well-oiled machine. So Donna, will you have the floor? <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to see you all again. Um, so Ship Shape Day is Saturday. This, that's coming up this Saturday. We will be handing out supplies at Town Hall between eight and one. I'll give a quick rundown of the, of the basic facts. Um, it, we invite everyone who's listening, any anybody in town or not in town, anybody who's interested to come and help clean up the town of litter and also any storm debris that um, mars the purity of our marshes and beaches. It's an opportunity for a lot of people to come together and have a great impact. And in, when we're looking to increase visitation in town, this is, we want to present a really trash-free, litter-free community. So um, we have uh, 
bags and gloves at town hall on Saturday morning. Um, we encourage people to recycle, uh, to sort recyclable materials. We have a separate bag for those. And we have grabbers available for a deposit, which is refundable upon their return. The neat thing about Situate Shipshade Day is that the DPW allows us to leave the filled bags and the piles of debris beside the road or in cases of marshes and beaches in, near a parking area so that they can pick them up and they give us until Monday morning to do the cleanup. So it doesn't have to be done on Saturday. There's no, it, it just makes it easier, I think, for people to participate. And we, we're so grateful for the cooperation of the DPW um, to do that. Um, we are pleased to say that we have a new updated website and encourage everyone to check that out, shipshapeday.org, if they have any questions or if they want more details. And uh, the weather looks good. So we hope to see you all there. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, it does. It looks like a, it's like the short window this weekend where we can get this done. So uh, thank you for that. We're promoted in, in our um, on our social media and all of that. So I expect that we're going to have a good turnout, Med. And I'm so grateful that you're generaling it again <laughs> because I know it'll get done right. Um, and if anyone on the board is around and wants to go help out, um, you're welcome to come down and, and help hand stuff out um, at Town Hall. Um, any thank questions? You. We'll be uh, picking stuff up. <laughs> You'll be too busy picking. I know, I, honest to God, I've got like my whole territory sc scattered out already. <laughs> uh, good. All right. Well, we, Cisco, would you like to tell us yeah. about the. Uh... And, uh, we will also initiate again our planned situate on May the 1st uh, at the same time. Hope that we can put up the uh, planned situate sign again in front of the town hall. We have uh, a lot of marigolds that we will be giving away to people. Uh, on that day, so we are looking forward to combining these two events. Um, our new initiatives are uh, particularly important this year. I, uh, we all feel on the Beautification Commission because uh, a lot of the money that we have for new initiatives, uh, we are planning to spend on improving the um, the streetscape on Front Street. One of the, the pieces that the Beautification Commission feels is that the more attractive Front Street looks and the more we can hide still some of the empty uh, storefronts, uh, the better it's going to look. We uh, did get involved with this uh, activity because of the Situate Harvard Merchant Association contacting us. Um, Mike Breen has been absolutely fabulous in helping us look at all, what all would improve that streetscape. He has approved um, the placement of planters in nine different spots on uh, Front Street. Yeah. The uh, um, uh, Kennedys uh, has been uh, very wonderful in um, uh, promoting this event by um, uh, donating two of the planters so that we only pay for seven of them out of the nine. Uh, we are very, very grateful to that. Um, another thing that we uh, are very, very grateful for is uh, how Lorraine and Michelle, uh, as well as Andrew Goodrich, has helped us to kind of move into 2021 with our um, uh, visibility. Uh, uh, I love Andrew's QR codes, which we are plastering on all the signs wherever they go, and we're planning to put them on the pots as well. And uh, both Lorraine and Michelle have uh, trained, um, uh, I should say, our uh, one of our members, Heidi, uh, because I really wasn't all that clued in, uh, I must say. I found it very challenging, but Heidi loved uh, doing all of the work that is uh, related to the website. So our website is up to date at this point. Um, the other initiatives that, that, that we have is uh, to add more plantings to town hall. We have put money aside to put plantings around the health department so that that whole area is going to be uh, really beautiful. Um, and uh, the other part that uh, we are very happy about is that 
because of the increased visibility that we're having, uh, thanks to uh, the web page and what have you, um, Seth Pfeiffer has been fabulous, Ruth Thompson, Kim Peters from the, uh, uh, the Peach Jar. Uh, because we are getting more visibility, we are also getting more uh, inquiries and uh, people are asking us uh, uh, about uh, collaboration between the various groups in this town. And we feel that the more this, um, the more all of us can collaborate, uh, the more beautiful the town is going to be. So then the last thing is that we will continue with, you know, the railroad island, the merchant vouchers uh, are set and the adopt a lots uh, people are already starting to get their lots ready. And that's Hello. it, I'm trying to keep it short. I'm trying to keep it short. Oh no, I have a I, long meeting. I, you, you, I mean, we were fortunate with the EDC, the hard working, but I have to commend, I mean, you guys are a well-oiled machine and, and the improvements that you have proposed and are getting moving are phenomenal. And so I just want to clarify, did you, did I hear you correctly? There's nine new planters going to be put Around yeah. North Central? Yes, and uh, the vote for funding that will be on May 18th. But the uh, uh, you know the the, uh, the commissioners are are very much uh, in favor. Most of the commissioners are very much in favor. We were delayed with the vote because uh, there was a concern about uh, how the uh, pots would be taken care of, mm -hmm. and the uh, or the pots or the planters. The planters. Uh, fall under all the criteria. There are seven criteria to have an adopt a lot. So the planters will fall under the adopt a lots. There are two new volunteers who will be taking on, um, taking care of these these uh, these planters. The planters are self watering and they're kind of like a rain barrel. So the, the when it rains, it's even better. But uh, they they hold about six weeks of water to to self water themselves and because they are adopt a lot next year they will be getting the funding from our adopt a lot uh, uh, program and we will be able to replant everything and these barrels um, they are at least lasting 10 years and they're, they're great. I, I happen to have them myself here. So for four years out in the, in the winter and they're, they're great. That's wonderful. Great, well, all of this connect, connects together. Um, thank you for speed, speed dating us on that. Are there any questions about uh, Beautification Commission's plans for next Saturday or for the summer? No, just thank you for everything. I yeah, know. thank you too, Maura. <laughs> oh. Oh. I, uh, I know you guys work hard. I feel and and yeah, I I I feel like there's blooming enthusiasm for our recovery. So <laughs> yes, from everybody, and um, yeah, it's exciting. It's an exciting town to be in at this point in in time. Great. All right. Well, we will see you, ladies, on Saturday. Um, and look forward to, to all of the rollout of your plans and appreciate it very much. Thank you. And thank you for your support. Yep. Thank you. Great. <laughs> all right, we're on to page two, but we're wicked late. Um, I, I would like to suggest to the board, unless there's any uh, um, objection, we have um, our 835, 840, 845, and 850 are all being presented by folks who have to stick around all night anyway. So I'd like to put um, them out of order so that we can, the next will be our discussion of the community septic management program. And then I'd like to jump down to the land purchase discussion. Oh wait, actually I take that all back because after that it is all of the choir. Never mind, I take it all back. We'll go on to our, what is supposed to be 830, which is the community septic management program loan. Um, I don't know if Pam's here or if Nancy, are you covering? I'm covering for Pam, she's okay. um, under the weather. All right. Well, then we will we will have a, we will go go on with there are the folks that have to stay up late with us, um, and this is the re um, re um, filling of the septic. I'll let you explain it better because it's nine thirty and I stopped making sense. <laughs> it, it, you were right. It, this is um, a renewal of the septic loan program. We did have an original two hundred thousand dollars, which we have gone through. That did seven systems in town. 
there is a wait list for the program. And so this will now, with the additional 200,000, allow the Board of Health to start um, um, approving additional projects for homeowners who are waiting to replace their septic uh, systems. Great. And this is a fairly routine measure that we've received all the backup on. Are there any questions from the board on this matter? I see none. Uh, Mr. Vignani. Yeah. Nancy, can you just remind us um, where this money's coming from and how it gets repaid? Um, the uh, homeowners that participate in the program uh, agree to a betterment, which is a uh, recorded against their property, and they repay, repay the loan that's granted to them uh, with interest uh, over a 20 year period. And we use those funds to pay off the debt. <coughs> and the $200,000 that we're adding in right now? It'll be the same case. Um, those homeowners that partici participate in the second $200,000 will sign. A better oh, no, no. Where, where are we getting the $200,000? Oh, of the Mass Clean Water Trust. Okay. So the, the Mass Clean Water Trust fronts the money and then it, we pay it back through a loan and then we pay it back. Yes, over 20 years. Great. Thank you. Um, great. Are there any question, other questions about this matter? All right. Seeing none, this uh, is would someone like to make a motion? Move the Board of Selectmen approve a community septic management program loan with the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust in the amount not to exceed $200,778. Moved by Mr. Vignani. Is there a second? Second, second by Ms. Curran. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. I'll take the vote and then the clerk has to read the vote of the select board as well. Oh, um, right, because it's funding. Yeah, correct. Okay. So, Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Motion carries 5 0 with a 10. With the uh, clerk, please read the notification. I will. I, the clerk of the select board of the town of Situate, Massachusetts, certify that at a meeting of the board held April 27, 2021, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and at which a quorum was present, the following vote was passed, all of which appears upon the official record of the board in my custody. Voted one, that the town shall issue a bond or bonds in aggregate principal amount not to exceed $200,778. The bonds pursuant to chapters 29C and 111 of the general laws, a 778 portion of which was authorized by a vote of the town, passed April 9th, 2018, Article 3, Item D, which authorized a total borrowing of 200,000 and a $200,000 portion of which was authorized by a vote of the borrower, passed November 16th, 2020, Article 7, Item 4, which authorized a total borrowing of $200,000 for a community septic management loan program the project. Two, that in anticipation of the issuance of the bonds, the treasurer <coughs> to issue an interim loan or notes, the notes, from time to time in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $200,778. Three, that each bond or note shall be issued as a single registered security and sold to the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, the trust, at a price determined pursuant to the financing agreement. Four, that the treasurer is authorized to determine the date, the form, the maximum interest rate, and the principal maturities of each bond and note to execute a financing agreement or agreements with the trust with respect to the sale of the bonds and notes, such date, form, and maturities, and the specific interest rate or rate, rates of the bonds and notes to be approved by a majority of the select board and the treasurer and evidenced by their execution of the bonds or notes. Five that all action taken to date by the town and its officers and agents to carry out the project and its financing, including the execution of any loan agreement by the treasurer are hereby ratified, approved and confirmed. And six, that the treasurer and the other appropriate town officials are each hereby authorized to take any and all actions necessary or convenient to carry out the provisions of this vote, including execution and delivery of the financing agreement or agreements and the project approval certificate and regulatory agreement or agreements relating to the project. 
I further certified that the votes were taken at a meeting open to the public, that no vote was taken by secret ballot, that a notice stating the place, date, time, and agenda for the meeting, which agenda included the adoption of the above votes, was filed with the town clerk, and a copy thereof posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours in or on the municipal building that the office of the town clerk is located or, if applicable, in accordance with an alternative method of notice prescribed or approved by the Attorney General as set forth in 940 CMR 29.03 Section 2B and at least 48 hours not including Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remain so posted at the time of the meeting and that no deliberation or decision in connection with the sale of the bonds or notes were taken in executive session, all in accordance with general laws, chapter 30A, sections 18 to 25, as amended, further suspended, supplemented, or mo modified by the executive order of the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, chapter 30A, section 20, dated March 12, 2020, dated April 27, 2021. That's it? <laughs> Isn't that enough? Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for reading that. I think that that's it, right? That's all we have to do on that. Matter. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I'm glad I'm not the clerk anymore. <laughs> um, okay, so then we will uh, move on to the ratification of temporary extension of premises for Untold Brewery and the River Club. Uh, Mr. Oh, look, love when you just pop out of the uh, senior center. <laughs> uh, Jim, would you like to run us through? I mean, this is just, uh, you already said yes, so tell us what you said yesterday. Yeah, Untold Brewery is new. It's six to eight tables outside uh, to allow them to have outside seating. They'll follow all the COVID guidelines. Uh, there's a picture there of what they're going to do in the hours, but it's a fairly easy request for on tool. Okay. And the River Club? The River Club was just to increase their capacity to meet the current COVID guidelines up to 150. I'm sure they'll be coming back within a couple of weeks to go to the new guidelines of uh, 250, but that just brings them up to the 150 outside guidelines. Okay. Um, okay, great. Are there any questions about um, these two applications? We did get all of the the um, backup as far as where everything is going to go. Um, I think I think this is made much easier given the relaxations today. So, any questions for Jim? Not really, but I don't I don't understand why we have to do any type of thing for untold. Haven't they always served out in that area? No, this is outside and around. This is new. So it's beyond the patio, Jim. Yeah, there'll be tables kind of on the uh, lawn around the patio. Okay. If you look at the drawing, Mar, it doesn't show yep. really well, but you'll see uh, the wall at the top. You'll see like three darker squares going up. Oh, like, yeah. Those okay. are the extra tables. Okay, got it. Makes sense. Thank you. I didn't know if those were dry grass patches. <laughs> <laughs> grass for people, not for lawns. Kara, did you have a comment? Yeah, is it, will other entities be coming to us with similar requests? Mm, probably. I think I mean, most we'll, of them are already in, Karen. Yeah, well, so in other words, Hibernian, for example, do they have to come back to us or are they still operating under They're the operating last... under the original that you gave them. Okay, all right, thank you. Great, any other questions about these two um, um, issues or ratifications. If not, um, I'll entertain a motion. We have two motions. I will entertain the first. Actually, put the board excuse is a collective, uh, collective vote, Lorraine. What's that? Yeah, can we do both motions and then uh, one roll call? Sure. Okay, great. Is, are there two motions? I move that the select board ratify the temporary license issued by the town administrator to untold brewery to serve malt under a temporary extension of premises and outdoor seating license in accordance with COVID-19 order number 35 and consistent with the process of approving such requests established by the select board. Two. Oh, okay. Two. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to second that, but go ahead. Okay. 
I move that the select board ratify the temporary license issued by the town administrator to the River Club to serve liquor under a temporary extension of premises and outdoor seating license in accordance with COVID-19 order number 35 and consistent with the process of approving such requests established by the select board. Are there a second for both? Second. Second moved, both motions made by Ms. Conley, seconded, both motions seconded by Ms. Curran. Uh, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Motion carries, both motions carry 5-0. Um, there has been an anonymous request that we take a short break um, because we have been sitting in these seats now for three hours. So I would request that we, um, if folks, we're already late, so we're gonna, we're gonna take a five minute break so that folks can stretch their legs. Um, it's now 9.36, so whoever, so 9.41 will reconvene. Can't stop talking. Well, once Brenda gets you all forget it.
All right. While we wait for the others, I have to say that I don't know about you, but when I put on my GPS and it tells me it's going to take me an hour and 10 minutes to get where I'm going and make it my mission to get there less time. <laughs> and I feel like we're off the rails here. So we're going to do speed dating the rest of this meeting. All right. And there's more. We are. And then there is uh, all we need is to make sure that Lorraine is ready. Madam Chair, we can clarify you're not advocating for any speeding during those GPS. I no, I'm no, I do like there. What were those? Remember the well, you're too young, but in the, there used to be these road rallies, and the it you weren't it, you had to comply to all rule, like you had to do the same speed limit, and, everything, and it was all a test of who could this is long before GPS, who could navigate, who could get like from point A to point B, but if you exceeded speed limit you did all that stuff you failed like you didn't win the road rally it was a thing it was the thing back in the 70s when i was 14. <laughs> and ball run yeah. <laughs> how fast did your horse buggy go exactly well i had an extra whip and i'm happy to bring that back out mr vignani <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so i always always <laughs> Um, okay, so we lost Jim, but we have one, two, three, four, five of us. There's Jim. Okay, Lorraine, are you ready? Yes. Okay, so thank you to everybody that's been patiently reading up with us. It is now 942, which means it's time for the 840 discussion of acceptance of the Senior Center, Center anonymous donation, Ms. Holt. Uh, we have received an anonymous donation of $2,500 towards the Senior Center project. This will help reduce the overall impact to the taxpayer. So I would be um, hopeful that the board would accept this donation. Great. Um, are there any questions from Ms. Holt or anyone on this? All right. We are nope, so delighted nice. and thankful to whoever this generous person was and appreciate their um, support of this project. And I would accept a motion. Move that the select board accept a donation of $2,500 for the benefit of the new senior center building project. Moved by Ms. Kern. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Goodrich, uh, seeing no further discussion, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Ms. Conley, did you answer? I'm sorry. Oh, she's muted and she's nodding. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, Ms. Curran? Yes. yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. And thank you. Whoever can thank the anonymous person, thank them for us. Um, then the 845, look, we're catching time, is uh, for a discussion vote on ambulance abatements for fiscal year 16. But I think, it, is it more than that or just 16? Um, only 16. Uh, so yep. annually, the as part of the board's ambulance uh, collection policy, we review our outstanding. Um, anything over 24 months, we consider for abatement. Uh, you consider for abatement. Uh, we've been keeping 60 months or five years in the open receivable. So fiscal 16 would be the year to abate. Uh, normally we do it in June. Um, I just brought it forward a little bit earlier because I assumed that your agendas are only going to get heavier. <laughs> Unfortunately, I picked a very heavy agenda that it wasn't intentional. Um, so this would uh, be to close out all of the open uh, fiscal 16 bills. And as you can see from the history that was provided to you, there's been very little activity on fiscal 16 being collected in the last, uh, during this fiscal year. Thank you. And I'll note that yeah, we did get all the backup and that the town does do um, an except, exceptional job at trying to recover any um, outstanding amounts and that this is just sort of a final cleanup after all of those efforts have been exhausted. So um, thank you for that. Um, the amount is um, $67,350 and 28 cents. Are there any questions for Nancy about this matter? I have a, I have a question, sorry, I know. Uh, yeah, go I'm, ahead. Just, I'm just curious, Nancy, you know that 2.7% collection rate five years later, is that, I'm just curious, is that in the, in the ballpark or is it lower than typical? Typically, just curious. Um, it's just a couple of isolated bills that were collected. 
So it, it, it's um, not that much. And, and we could still get collections if, if something comes forward, but for the most part, there's no activity on these after this point. Right. Okay, thank you. Are there any question, other questions on this matter? Okay, if not, um, we, this is, as Nancy points out, this is a discussion we have every year and um, it is in keeping with our, our exceptional financial policies. So, um, which we will again revisit any day now. <laughs> um, do I have a motion on this matter? Move to sure. approve the recommendation recommended abatements for all outstanding ambulance charges from fiscal year 2016 totaling $67,350.28. With Mr. Vignani, is there a second? Second by Ms. Curran. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this matter requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, we are now up to our 850, which is a discussion vote of sewer betterment deferral on parcel ID 141490. Um, and Lorraine will present that. This is um, something that comes up occasionally. So we do have the backup. Lorraine, would you like to? Um, sure. Comments? Um, this is an option for uh, some of our senior residents or people who meet the criteria. This applicant meets all the criteria for a sewer betterment deferral to be voted by the sewer commissioners, which are the select board. Great. Um, you said it perfectly. Um, are there any questions for Lorraine or Jim about this? Seeing none, um, I'll entertain a motion. Move to grant the sewer betterment deferral for current year taxes, parcel ID 14-001-049. Motion by Ms. Kern, is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Vignani. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Motion carries 5-0, thank you so much. Thank you, Lorraine, for uh, your work on that because sure. it takes a lot to qualify folks on that. Uh, as I noted at the beginning of the meeting a long time ago, we are postponing the Harbor community discussion until 5.11. So that means we're all the way up to 9.05, uh, which is a discussion vote of the Chief Justice Cushing land purchase and sale agreement, which um, was uh, um, uh, approved at town meeting on April 12th. Jim? Yeah, well, I mean, we've discussed this ad nauseum. I didn't get the uh, PNS into the packet. It's a standard PNS. It's been approved by town council uh, and council for the seller. So really, the board needs to take a vote to authorize the chair to execute the PNS uh, and also to certify uh, that the land will not be leased, rented, managed, or otherwise exclusively committed committed to a third party during the life of the bonds. Um, and that will wrap it up until we do a closing after July 1st. But the, the buyers or the sellers are looking for the PNS. I couldn't find um, a vote where we had offered <coughs> the PNS. So we just need to take that step tonight uh, in the motion as I presented. All right, thanks, Jim. The only thing new that, that we didn't talk about is the, is the prohibition for third party, which we haven't talked about, but was never the intent. It was because we needed municipal and that's how we re represented it to the town when they voted to support this purchase. Are there any questions for Jim about this? Jim, can you just repeat what you said we can't do? <laughs> uh, least rent and manage or otherwise exclusively committed to a third party. Okay. Any other questions about that matter? Would anyone care to make a motion? There is not one in your backup. Oh, no. oh. I can't make it because you're telling me to do something. <laughs> so, so moved as presented by the town administrator. And I'll make sure Lorraine has it. I make a motion for the Situate Select Board Chair to approve a purchase and sale agreement as outlined by Jim Bedreau in this evening's meeting. Eloquently moved by Ms. Curran and seconded by Ms. Conley. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, it requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0, and uh, I will go through with Mr. Boudreau and execute that forthwith. Um, the next item on our agenda is 915 to discuss the town meeting easements, vote and discuss, um, uh, vote and discuss and vote, sorry. Um, and these were, again, I believe both of these, were both of these on town meeting? Yes. Okay, so these were approved by town meeting on April 12th, Jim? Right, and the motions uh, came in separately from the packet, so you'll have those separately <laughs> from Lorraine. Uh, this is the, the second to last step needed to execute the easement on First Parish and to release the easement on Gardner, the board has to take a vote as set in the packet, and then those will go to town council and they will be recorded. Um, on the one for First Parish, I just need to have the engineer stamp the plan. And the one on Gardner, I need our engineering department to shrink the plan down small enough to be um, accompanying the plan. But you've seen the plans, you understand what they are, you know where they are. This is really just the, the final vote for the board to send it on to be recorded. Okay, and they were approved by town meeting. Also. They were both approved by town meeting, that's correct. Right, um, has anyone found the motions? And Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Bedrow? I know where they are. <clears throat> I sent a separate email with these motions. Yeah. Uh, I know, I'm hoping someone can find I them. I have them. Okay, oh. Ms. Curran, would you care to make a motion? Sure, move that the select board approve the grant of easement for 337 First Parish Road to Susanna Green, Emily Green, and Tyler Marino and authorize town council to record said easement in essentially the same form as attached here too. Moved by Ms. Curran, is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Conley, any further discussion on that matter? Seeing none, it requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Is there a motion on the Gardner Road property? Move that the select board approve a release of easement for 26 and 32 Gardner Road, marrying Nice Air as trustee of the Parsons Meadow Nominee Trust and Jason and Catherine U. Catlander and authorize town council to record said easement in essentially the same form as attached here too. Moved by Ms. Curran, is there a second? Second. Second. Oh, all right, second by Mr. Vignani. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, that requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. <laughs> all right, guys, we're blazing through. We are now on to our 930, which is a discuss vote. The mass housing letters for 40B projects at Bartlett Fields 3A and Booth Hill Road at 279 Old Oak and Bucket. Um, this, there's extensive backup in your packet regarding this matter. Um, I really wanna commend our planning department, especially Karen Joseph for meticulously going through the applications and documenting concerns that the town would have um, to either of these developments Unfortunately, they're both 40 Bs, so I um, it limits how much influence we will have. But we're we're giving it we're giving it the college try by putting everything into the letter. Hopefully, you've all had a chance to review it, and I would like to see if um, you have comments or questions, and or I'm happy to overview it if you'd like. Or Jim, would you like to add something? I mean, I know there's a lot of people on um, that they're, they're probably not here for the drain lays licenses, so. This is really the first step. A developer applies to mass housing for project eligibility. Um, until he gets eligibility, they cannot file with the Zoning Board of Appeals for the 40B project. Uh, eligibility, uh, in my 20 something years, I have know one project that's been denied eligibility. And then they came back about six months later and said, yeah, we changed two things, everything else is fine. And they got project eligibility. So it is a tremendously high hurdle to jump to not get project eligibility. Uh, as part of that, the town has the ability to comment on the project. So we received the original uh, proposal from the developer. We had a meeting with them, a site walk with uh, them in mass housing. 
All the town departments were queried as to what they would like to see in the letter. Uh, and you see the compilation of that there. Uh, in addition on the uh, Merritt Woods Booth Hill project, um, Bartlett Field, sorry, Merritt Woods is next door. We had received comments from the condominium at Merritt Woods. We have attached and endorsed their comments to this letter. So they will go to mass housing also. Uh, once this is filed, we have a deadline of May 1st to get our comments back in. Uh, it'll be viewed by mass housing. Mass housing will issue a certificate of eligibility. I, I can guarantee that. Uh, and then after that, at some point, the developer will file the actual plans with the zoning board of appeals and start the permitting process. Thank you, Jim, for that overview. Um, I will note, because I'm sure that the public hasn't had a chance to see what our, I mean, our, our letter is public document and we're happy to share it with anyone that wants to see what the letter says. Um, and it's extremely detailed, you know, of the concerns we have about, um, you know, uh, destruction of the greenway on 3A, coming too close to abutting properties, um, how the uh, proposed septic field is designed and what does that mean for um, both our, our water table and for um, in, uh, impact on abutters um, and a whole host of things that, you know, our planning department went through rules and regs and, and, and our um, uh, DPW departments all looked at the proposal and put all of our concerns out there. Um, the biggest one I think I will highlight for the board and for those who are interested is the concern about being able to provide appropriate water, um, um, water infrastructure, because not so much about, I mean, partially because of it's a big project and we're getting low on water, but also because there's, um, there's none of the pressure in the pipe that would be um, servicing that particular lot. Um, so there's a lot of infrastructure improvement that would be required to properly um, service water there and provide fire protection without you know, impeding the folks around it. Um, so those, those were the things that were, I would highlight um, and I will put it out to the board first to see if um, you have comments or questions. Uh, presently, the uh, Jim, is it, I, this is a question for you. Is, does, is it required that the letter comes from just the chair or can the whole board endorse the letter and send it as a body? Highly up to you. Okay. I, I, I think I would recommend that if, if the board um, felt like that this was a, a, good, a good shot across the bow, that we change it from my signature to the entire board to give it just that much more. Yep, that's easy enough. Okay. Uh, Ms. Conley? Yeah, I just have a question. I thought this was one parcel or parcel of land and then it was 140B, but now it looks like it's two. They're two separate projects. Are they two separate owners? Yes. Yeah. All right. One I guess. Is a rental the one on uh, 3A is a rental and the one on Old Oak and Bucket is a uh, condo association. All right. Do they both have a May 1st um, application? Uh, okay, so they both have the same deadline to comment. Yeah. Is, so it's just coincidence that two separate things and almost the same location came in at the same time? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe in those type of coincidences. But, I don't either. Um, I believe- uh, Well, they're not anywhere near one another. Well, they kind yeah, of I are. I believe that the second, the developer <laughs> on Old Oak and Bucket knew the one on 3A was coming in, they wanted to preserve their rights and get their, theirs filed. So. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Goodrich. So on, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So under the section utilities. So there's the, the very first line on the, I think the third paragraph. Yeah. There's Which no letter, action. Andrew? Which one? Oh, I'm sorry, on Bartlett, Bartlett Field. Okay. And it says there's no access to the situate municipal sewer system at this site. So the proposed project will not have an impact on the town sanitary waste disposal system. But my understanding is that that's not necessarily true in, on the impact in the sense that any additional, because the way that our current um, uh, water treatment plant works is that 
there's a certain percentage of wastewater when we clean it that currently goes into our waste disposal system. Hence why we're looking at the new, um, any new plants, new water treatment plants. One of the major goals is to have no residuals and nothing go into our sewer system. So it currently any additional does impact our, our inflow and outflow. And I would love to clarify that because that's a huge marker to me. If, I'm not sure how we'd be able to quantify that, Andrew, and neither Sean Anderson or Will brought that up when we went over the comments, so. Um, I think he brings up a great point. You know, it can't be none. Well, it's something. I, it's something. Yeah, so the proposed, the proposed system on site for Bartlett Fields is a system that has not been used, it's new technology and it's some kind of evaporation system. Because one of the comments that we did get from the water department is it would be preferable to discharge into ground treated water because then it would reinforce, it would re, um, re um, it would go back into our groundwater, which would be good. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I mean, Jim, how do we handle that? Wait, Andrew's well, waiting. <laughs> I know, I know what Andrew's saying. Okay, when we when we make water, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a residual that comes out of the water that has to be disposed of. Right. The stuff that we take out of the water that doesn't go into the drinking water. And part of the problem that we have is with the limited site where the current water treatment plant is, those residuals get sent to our sewer treatment plant. So there's- Does this system do that though? I thought it evaporated it. I'm sorry? This I is, thought this system proposed no, wait, evaporation. Just, hear me this out. Is, what okay. I was saying is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, but we will be ah. more water through the plant to serve this project. So there will be more residuals that will have to go through the soil treatment plant. Is that accurate, Andrew? Correct. You're right to be able to quantify that precisely. I don't know because I don't know, you know, all the exact details, but there, scientifically, it is a fact that there is an impact because we have to create more water and we do not currently have a new residual free um, plant. And so it does impact our municipal sewer system, which prevents us from doing anything in North Situate which prevents our economic <coughs> going forward to help everything else. I mean, we're talking about trying to put the strongest foot forward and this does impact our ability to do anything we want to do in North Situate. Can we, we, can we add those concerns to the letter, Jim? <laughs> I'm just, I mean, you, you could change it that it will have um, that we have limited capacity so and no access to the situate municipal source system at this site. However, due to our aging infrastructure, our infrastructure, it's putting such a burden that it's that that it's causing um, additional stress on our system. Additional stress on our system. Yeah. Even though they, you know, even though it's not a system, our infrastructure is not equipped to take on this. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the stupid one. If you have a septic system, we're not, you're not using the municipal sewer system. And I, I, I guess I question, how are you creating water? I don't know enough about, obviously, septic systems. It's the water that comes to you previously. So just your regular drinking water. Yeah. Yeah. When, the, when the water goes through the water treatment plant, we filter stuff out. Right. And that stuff that gets filtered out needs to be disposed of. I understand that. So we dispose of some of that by putting it into the sewer system. But so Andrew's point is, and it's valid, it's just not calculable, is if you have to make more water because you have this development, you will then be producing more waste from that water production, which will impact the sewer system. And it's not consistent. The more usage, like during those bad times, that's when the guys at the plant have to 
use that option and clean it up and clean it more. So the worse it gets, the more oh. we're putting into our system. So in other words, because the water that we drink it has to be cleaned, if it's coming from the water treatment plant, then the more water we send out, the more water has to go through the treatment plant that winds up with the residuals that wind up at the, okay. Correct. Right, so it's not an, just because they have an on-site on, on treatment plant is just not accurate to say it doesn't impact our, our sewer system. Correct? I just don't want to give them any credit for <laughs> not going to have an impact because they- it, No, I think it's a good call out. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. come up with something for that. Okay. And then to the same point is uh, on Old Oak and Bucket, there was a comment on page 205 of our backup that said that the sewer infrastructure uh, was not used. And- It almost, it almost be the same comment, the exact same comment. Well, no, but I mean, I, I, I don't, cause I'm not on page 205. There was something just not accurate about the statement in the letter. Um, which is why I called it out. And let me find to page 205. Uh, well, we'll review it, but there was something in there that I didn't think was quite accurate. And it wasn't, it wasn't quite as, as thoughtful as Mr. Goodrich's, but it was just a straight up. One letter at a time. So One I'll, letter at a time. Okay, we'll stay on our on that. I'll run it by Andrew, but it, it'll have to be first thing in the morning because we're going to get this out the next day. Yeah, because it's it, the deadline is now. Okay. I need you all, uh, need you all to come in and sign unless you want to have a black signature page and just sign that. Okay. So why don't, why don't we just have Karen sign it then so it doesn't get delayed with all yeah. five of us getting in there? I can, I can sign it on behalf of the board if we vote to support the letter. Correct? Sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other comments? I mean, the reality is, as Jim said, that we will we'll throw everything we can at our concerns about the site, and there are m many, many. Um, but the mass housing, the bar is very, very high for them to um, not approve that. So I, I know that this is also probably a question in some of the board's minds. We have Herringbrook that's being constructed now, we have stockers that's being constructed now. Uh, why don't those count and why aren't we getting a so-called safe harbor from the construction of those units? The way the process works, when the town issues a permit for a comprehensive 40B, then the affordable units go on our subsidized housing list. If a building permit is not issued within one year of the issuance of the permit, all of those units come off your subsidized housing list and do not count again until occupancy is issued for those units. So we will not get any credit for Stockbridge. We will not get any credit for Herringbrook until they are actually occupied. So- Because they didn't get a building permit? Because they did not get it. I mean, Herringbrook's been almost 10 years, I think, 10 since- years, the yeah. Bring the so, Stockbridge. Yeah. Uh, you don't get a permit within one year from the issuance of the permit, then they come back off your list and it has to wait until they receive occupancy. But they can't change the classification of those units, right? They still have to build them. Right. I'm sorry? They still have to build the affordable number. It's just yeah. that we don't get credit for it until they're occupied. Right. Yeah. We get credit for all of them. So we've got, I guess we've been dealing with this project for a while. You know, we did the land swap, which you documented here, because it was on the exit that they had was unsafe. Um, and we've known that this is not something that anyone's really thrilled with. But as Jim mentioned, there's no way to. It's, it's a tough battle and we've never won one before. So um, hopefully this letter will have some impact and we'll have a little bit of negotiating power with them. But it's um, unfortunately, it's unlikely. But one other just point that I want to make for people watching. So the town is required or must get to 10% of its housing stock being deemed affordable under the guidelines. When you build a project, there are different ways to count the units. If you build a condo unit and there are 100 units, 25% of them must be affordable. So 25 of the units are affordable and 25 units count as affordable. So you get 75 market rate units, 
25 affordable units. On a rental project, those same 100 units with 25 being affordable, all 100 count towards your affordable number. So you get 100 affordable units on your subsidized housing list, but only 25 of them are actually affordable under the guidelines. So it is designed to encourage rental units. And the problem with rental units, in order to make your money on rental units, you build big projects. Um, so that's so, why you see something like this. Right, and Jim, the, uh, the calculations that we did when this came before us several years ago was that this project will get us very close to that 10%. So right now we're at 5.1%, Tony. Uh, we had Herringbrook, Stockbridge, the Drew Company, um, that gets us to 6.34%. And then Bartlett Field would get us just over at 10.08%. However, that is based upon the 2000 census number for housing units in situate. <laughs> so when we get a new number, we could then dip below 10%. However, because we will meet two years worth of our affordable housing goals under our affordable housing plan, we will get a two year safe harbor in which we will be able to reject out of hand additional 40B applications. So thank you, Jim, for laying that all out. Um, I know that there's concerned residents. So the timeline on this right now is and, and correct me if I'm wrong. So we will submit our comments to Mass Housing and they will more than likely say, thank you very much and go ahead, we're gonna let them do this. Then the um, developer will submit their plans to Zoning Board of Appeal. At, right. you, he may or may not take into account some of our comments and make changes to his plans, which would then take okay. a little longer, but after he gets his approval from Mass Housing, then he can submit the plans. Okay. Once they're submitted, and, and that's a good that's a good asterisk is that this board is going is has made their um, concerns very vocal to the developer. Uh, you know, protecting abut budding properties, protecting the greenway, protecting the water, protecting the air, all of that. Um, things that we outlined in this letter, we've made that clear to the developer, and that encourage them that they'd be much better neighbors if they adapt it. Um, so once it goes to ZBA, then there is a robust public comment period, correct? A robust public process, public hearing process, correct. Okay, and that would be a good time for, um, you know, abutters or anyone concerned with this development to bring their concerns to ZBA. Right, and the town will have uh, peer review engineers that will be working for the town to double check anything that the the proponent is telling us. Okay. And it goes through all that process before any shovels are in the ground. Well, after once it gets through the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Zoning Board of Appeals will close the hearing process, they deliberate, and then they would uh, issue a decision. Based upon that decision, the applicant can appeal, uh, the neighbors could appeal, there's, there's different appeal processes. Okay. Um, normally it would be the, the developer that would appeal saying that the town has imposed conditions on the project that makes it uneconomical and therefore they can't build the affordable housing as planned. Uh, and then that goes to the housing appeals court. Okay. Thank you. So that's the timeline. Um, I, I know that there are a number of people that probably have questions, so I would like to give them an opportunity. Um, I don't know how much more we can add to that, but, um, um, does the board have any other questions or comments about either of, I mean, we focused on Bartlett Fields. Um, are there any other questions specifically about Old Oak and Bucket, Bucket which Jim recommended, uh, um, pointed out as a smaller project and it's a condominium project. Um, so these were for sale units. Um, Mr. Goodrich? A quick question. Do you know of any other municipalities who've um, been able to or have used eminent domain uh, around 40B for public use? I'll stop my head now, Andrew. Okay, just curious. Thank you. Um, and the, and one other clarification I had was 
are the Greenway designation on the 3A is really just a town preference. It's not scenic, it's not enforceable. Is that correct? Um, I, I'd have to look at what it says on our zoning bylaws, but as a 40B, it wouldn't necessarily apply. Okay. All right. To, to Mr. Goodrich's point, it's a, if we wanted to, to find a way to protect the Greenway, which has been a noted concern of the community for decades. Right, then, then you would, as part of the hearing process, you would push to leave as much of a buffer along 3A as possible under the project. Okay, all right. Um, are there other questions or comments for Mr. Bedreau on this? Okay, um, I know that we don't normally at 1017 at night have 42 people still hanging around. So I'm guessing Maybe somebody wants to, oh, we got two hands up already. So anyone else that'd like to raise their hand, I will, I will, because of the hour, I will ask you to keep your comments as brief as possible. And um, if we need to revisit, we'll figure out a time to follow up. Um, so I'm, I don't know who went first, so I'm gonna go just down the line um, and ask Kirsten, uh, I don't know if it's Kirsten, Kirsten, if you would like to um, give us your name and address and address the board, we'd appreciate it. Uh, yes, this is uh, Bruce Alltop. <laughs> um, and, and your address, sir, just so we have it on the- We're, uh, we're at uh, 38 Colonel Mansfield. Go ahead. My, yep. my, uh, my observation or question is uh, that, perhaps I missed it, but did, as part of the letter, the issues that you raised, did that include the addition of 500 or so automobiles on that in that location? Uh, yeah, Jim, do you want to address that or do you want me to? We don't talk about the number of automobiles, but we do talk about uh, issues we believe relative to the safety of accessing Loop 3A in that location, yes. Yes, terrific, thank you so and, much. And in addition to that, there was a question about if they've over, over spaced, like if there are too many parking spaces, because what's proposed is in excess of what our zoning requires. Uh, so um, we're looking at it both both ways. Too many parking spaces and danger of accessing 3A. Terrific. Uh, my wife has a question. I, I, was, just, I was just curious um, because we are new to situate, uh, so I'm not uh, particular with the zoning um, bylaws, but I haven't noticed that there are any four-story buildings or units that that would be this large for 260 units, I guess was what the, I, you know, the rumor on social media is. And so is, if there's nothing like that, that's such a sizable um, development in town, there, there are no bylaws or any zoning restrictions against such high rise buildings? So, I mean, we have zoning restrictions that determine what can be built, what can't be built. You can have four-story buildings. There are four-story buildings down in the harbor. Uh, having said that, 40B is designed to override local zoning at the uh, to produce housing, period. So if there are particular zoning bylaws that the developer feels are particularly problematic to allowing him to build his project, then he will ask for a waiver for those and the state uh, if the town doesn't grant them, I tell you the state will grant them on appeal. Okay. All right. Well, thank I, you. I do want to thank you for coming to us for information and not relying on social media. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> thank, you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, if you guys, uh, do you have any further questions? We'll move on to Mary Paula Shields is next, just because you're next. Uh, Mary. Hi. Um, I'm Mary Shields. I live at 11 Forest Lane. Um, I just moved to Citrate, um, to Forest Lane, um, two months ago, and this is all new to me at our new, our first meeting. Um, we were told about this. Um, we love our house. It, what can we do? Is there anything else we can do to help you guys support this? So, it can not happen or what would you suggest our next steps would be? I would suggest your next steps would be pay attention when it gets filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals that you participate in the hearings. Okay. 
Is there anything else we can do? That that would be the next step. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Situate. Thanks. Hopefully we can we can we can work together on this. Uh, the next hand raised is Geo Kyler. I hope I didn't butcher that. Uh, hey, Karen, uh, it's actually um, Ken Hirschfield. I signed in and somehow took my friend's uh, ID from when I last used it. Uh, Ken okay. Hirschfield, 118 Captain Pierce Road. Um, uh, first uh, question for you, just where, where can we see the copy of the letter that you mentioned or that we're going to send out? Will that be posted someplace? Uh, I'll have to mention it. You can share it if you want. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. Okay. And then, um, Jim, you know the numbers. Like, I mean, I, I, sometimes I drive around town and I see it. Um, you know, new construction. And I'm just like, when did that happen? And, you know, if you think about um, the proving grounds and what has yet to be built, the number of units, you look at 3A across from Oro, you look at Stockbridge Road. Now you've got, um, if I understood, I knew there was something going on off of, uh, you know, off of 3A, but it sounds like there's two, Bartlett and Merritt. And then you throw in the one that is in Norwell. Um, how many potential additional units are you know, going to be built if, you know, everything gets approved and, and knowing that number, whatever it is, which you probably have, like, I mean, it just seems plain as day. We don't have the water. I mean, I know that's the most obvious thing and I'm sure it's addressed in, in your letter to, um, you know, the, the state, but we just don't have the water. How can developments just be pushed through like this if every year we're on water restrictions earlier and earlier? Uh, it just, it just boggles the mind. Well, I, I think what the state would tell you is that you would just need to put those restrictions on sooner to conserve more water so that you had water for people and not had water for other uses. So mm -hmm. It's if, if you're bored and, and <laughs> want to just kind of blow your own mind, go to the Housing Appeals Committee website with the state and look at the decisions of, of what the Housing Appeals Committee has said yes to over local objections. It's, it's frightening in some, in some instances. And, and, um, and I'm just realizing I, I actually missed uh, uh, the Drew uh, development also. So, I mean, if you, yep. if you add all those up, uh, do you kind of have a ballpark as to how many potential new units we could have um, built in the next, you know, say two to three years well, with just, just what's there now? I have 150 at um, roughly at Seaside at Situate. Uh, Stockbridge Landing is 60 plus. Herringbrook Meadow is 60 plus. The Drew Company is 78. Uh, this is 268. Old Oak and Bucket is 34. So you're talking 400 plus, 500 plus. Wow. Yep. Okay. I, I think it's also important to raise, though, that in the like years previous, a lot of these projects, I don't know, Ken, if you heard us talking, you know, were approved 10 plus years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a lot of the factoring in of the, you know, the, the usage of, of water is, is tracked, if you will. So it's factored in every time the next one comes along. Um, and if it still falls within uh, the permanent amount that we're allowed to draw, mm -hmm. we, we have very difficult time fighting it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. I know. Like on three A down by Oro, it, it's been a, a really long time, and um, mm -hmm. I think it's almost since I moved here in 04. It might even go back before that or or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's just that the water situation just seems to be a whole different animal now than it was even you know ten years ago. And and you'll see when you get our right. when you review the letters, they're, they're lengthy and and it's very detailed that you know. Um, our planning department has has laid that out exactly what you asked. It's like yep. you know, even even without this, here's where we are. Yeah. Well, thanks you guys for what you're doing, and and Jim, a uh, 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 belated uh, once again, thank you for Egypt Beach. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I wish okay I could right I, now. <laughs> I wish I could um, sit here and say, yeah, we're going to stop this. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, Herringbrook was was. 10, 15 years, the town took it to court and a worse place to put Shoot. development like that, I'd be hard pressed to, to come up with. Mm -hmm. it, it's getting built. Yep. It's, yeah. the, the, the impetus for these from the state is overwhelming. 
Yeah, so Jim's absolutely right. When it, when it is posted, um, please be mindful and, and participate. Um, that's the best advice we can give you right now. Well, and also, you know, when asked um, when the previous resident, I'm sorry, I think they, I don't know if it was Mary Paula Shields or Kristen, you know, what else can we do? You know, as everyone's expressing, it's these are state laws that if we're going to fight them, it's got to be fought up at the, at the legislative level, you know, through Senator O'Connor and, and our representatives as well. So um, that would be another suggested next step for anybody. Yeah. And Jim, with those numbers you gave me, they, they actually add up to 650. So 650 coming at you, plus cars. 1030. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was actually, I mean, back just to the board discussion, one of the things that was mentioned that I really hadn't thought about, um, we, were, we were so focused on the water and the sewer is the impact. I and mean, we're gonna have to start thinking about our, how do we service an, that many increased residents through public safety. You know, um, that was noted in our planning department actually noted that and I, I really hadn't given that thought. You always, of course, think of schools, are you gonna have that many more kids, all that but you need to have the staff to make sure that you can respond to folks on an emergency basis. But that's down the road and, and that, that has nothing to do with this particular thing other than town planning. We need to think about that stuff. Um, so it's now, oh, I see one more hand um, from Dick. I'm gonna, if you could just state your name and address. Uh, I'm Dick Croft at 46 Forest Lane. I'm the president of the Merritt Woods Homeowners Association. And I wanted to thank you for tonight and, and uh, really supporting what we're trying to do to protect our community. Uh, I think the impact on uh, Merritt Woods is going to be very dramatic um, from all of the things we've talked about tonight. And we will continue to do our work on our end to um, try to mitigate the impact on, uh, on Forest Lane and on Merritt Woods. And uh, I'd also, I didn't hear the answer to the question regarding the letter you're writing. I'd love to have a copy of that. So we can circulate it to my homeowners and they can see where the town stands in relation to this project. And again, thank you for your, your time. Thank you, Jim. And Dick, I don't know if you had, we attached your letter from the association to ours. Great, I didn't realize that. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. All right, Jim, if you'll just make sure that it's available for anybody that needs it. Um, yeah, once uh, once I make the change and uh, as I said, I'll get agreement with Andrew on what that new language will look like. You can sign it. We'll do a PDF and put it right up. Okay, terrific. Um, Thank you. Uh, are there, if there are no, Dick can, Dick's hand still up. I think that there are no other questions or comments about this. Um, we are required to vote on, um, on the letter as amended. Um, does the board have any other further comments or questions about this? No, would somebody care to make a motion? Move that the board, uh, the select board approve the mass housing letters for the 40B projects, Bartlett Fields, Route 3A, Booth Hill Road, and 279 Old Oak and Bucket Road, as okay. amended. As amended, thank you, Ms. Conway. Is there a second? Mr. Goodrich is seconded. Um, is there any further discussion uh, the hand up is still Dick, so I assume you don't want to say anything more. I'm just going to double check. Dick, are you good? I'm quite through, thank you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, great, we have a motion and a second. Uh, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Reluctantly, yes. <laughs> Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion reluctantly carries 5-0 um, and Jim will re um, will release the final letter as soon as it's signed and I'll be in in the morning to do that if I can. <laughs> you just um, want to go and I say, I know it's late, but if you look at the one on Old Oak and Bucket, it is like the epitome of what a 40B is. It clears every single inch of the upland to the property lines to jam every last unit into that piece of property. Yep. It is so prototypical 40B, um, it's okay. ridiculous. And our letter in that case strenuously objects to the den density yeah. of that. Yep. So, you know, we're, we're, we're going to object to wherever we can. Do we know if those bogs are commercially 
um, harvested. About it. Dogs behind there. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just another conversation, maybe for tomorrow or the next day. But, um, uh, you know, if we if we can't fight it, maybe a business owner for his cranberry bogs can fight, help fight it. Well, I, again, and I don't I don't need to be you know Jimmy Downer, but <laughs> I know. I, I you can fight it forever, and in the end, they almost always win. You know, there was, there was a project in Norwell that was split in half with very little connectivity between the two ends. And for public safety reasons, the Housing Appeals Committee said, yeah, you're right. You can't put any housing on that other end, but you can take all the housing you want to put on that other end and jam it on the bottom lot. So if they got the same number of units, just denser than it was before. I mean, it's just, go read some of the decisions. They'll, they'll, they'll blow your minds. They really will. Some of the reasoning that that the housing appeals okay. committee has. Okay. Well, we'll go fight the good fight and keep on top of this. Um, well, we are now at, at 1032, ready to move oh. up. <laughs> My roommates just closed the door, so we're going to have to finish this up. <laughs> um, at, uh, we're on to new business. We have a Hawker Peddler license renewal for Zach's ice cream. Uh, who has been doing, I wish I knew how long they've been in town, but a long time. Um, is there any, are there any questions about this license application? If not, I'll entertain a motion. If somebody can find it. See the drain layer. So sorry, I'm trying to find that headline. I'm on drain layers too. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen, actually more than select board approval to renew the Hawker Petters license to Zach's ice cream for the 2021 season. Moved by Mr. Pagani, is there a second? Second. Ms. Curran, uh, do I have further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Mignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next is uh, a discussion vote on three drain light layers, renewal licenses, all three of whom have been operating in town for a great deal of time and have been vetted by our DPW. Is there um, any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, would someone like to make a motion? Move, Move to approve renewals of drain layer licenses for Site Pro Contracting, Jeffrey K. Morse, and Costello Contracting. Uh, motion by Ms. Curran, seconded by Mr. Vignani. Uh, no further discussion. Seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motions all carry 5-0. Now we are on to fun stuff. Um, the um, discussion vote on the annual town meeting, uh, election poll hours, and the warrant. Uh, Kathy wanted to be here tonight, but she was sick, so she couldn't um, make it. Well, she did provide us with a great deal of backup, which we appreciate. The election, the town uh, meeting, the, sorry, the town election will be held. Uh, it's not May 22nd. That date's not right, is it? Town election is... May 22nd. Oh, it is. Sorry, I had it wrong in my book. Um, it will be May 22nd, and there will, due to COVID, there will be distance. Early voting will be available by mail only and um, will be highly encouraged in order to decrease the amount of voters on poll day. Um, In-person absentee voting will be available in the town clerk's office in early May, and absentee voting is also available by mail. Um, the clerk has uh, requested that we consider poll hours of nine to two to allow sufficient time for the work to be done and for the casting of the absentee and early voting ballots. Um, this will also allow any voters who want to come in person to, to um, do so. Um, I will note that there is only one contested race on our local election this year. Um, so um, I, I think Kathy's, obviously Kathy's very thoughtful and, and knowledgeable about this. And I, I personally would support her motion. Are there any questions about this or comments? No. Okay. Would anyone? Well, nine to two is a little short. 
Well, I, you know, based on her backup and her comments, it was based on the fact that there's one contested race and we have, and they're really encouraging people to vote in advance. Uh, just, I mean, she had to make this determination before today's announcements, obviously. Um, I don't know if it'll impact folks or not, uh, but we certainly um, have the opportunity to extend that if you think that's warranted. Yep, Mr. Goodrich is making a face. Oh, I, I, I kind of agree. I mean, I, I hate to disagree with, with, with Kathy, but I mean, two o'clock just seems a little, just, it does seem a bit, or I mean, even three, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel, I know there's only one contested race, but it just seems a bit truncated. Okay. Any other comments? I always worry about uh, different shifts, right? And folks being able to vote when they get off of those shifts. Um, obviously there's a cost to extend it, right, Jan? Is it significant? Yes, what is what is an hour for the elections? This be the cost to the election workers. And if okay. So now I mean, I believe her thinking on this was that the majority of people vote in advance, particularly with COVID. Right. There, there's absolutely she's going to be encouraging folks to do that. Um, I mean, we were we were inundated with early voting here at Town Hall. Uh, for the election. All right, well, what does the board feel? Do you think that, um, I mean, uh, let me let me ask the one- I guess I think um, if it, you know, since the pool is so small, maybe this is the year to test it, right? I, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but- Test what? Shorter hours? Yeah. Uh, um, to those who have children that go to sporting fields in the middle of the day. What are, <laughs> is that an all day thing? I don't, I'm so out of that loop. Uh, for parents, is that a 10, nine to two? Do Most of those people vote in advance, either absentee ballot or yeah. here at town hall. I, I guess my only thing is we've, we've made this trend to try and expand voting so much and yet except for on election day, let's make that the shortest time possible. And just with so many other people now getting out, go to, I mean, I just don't know if we have the same people being vaccinated, if they're, if we'll see the 60% people. Right. Voting early. No, I'm just going on election day because I'm vaccinated. If they can. We don't know, <laughs> no, no, I have no idea. Well, we're all dying for social interaction, so it's not out of <laughs> Um do we have to vote tonight? Uh, yes, I think we do because she's got a... She's got the warrant already and prepared yeah. for 12 copies for your signature tomorrow. I think there's, I think there's a timeline on this. Um, uh, With the nine to two, or we can change that. If so we... nine to two, they'll, they'll have to be typed up again and reprinted. Um, prior elections, we've gone till, I think the shortest was ever five, I think if my memory serves, which is not reliable. I don't remember it ever going not to like five for the, for Mara's point, you know, you got shifts, you know. What do you guys think? Does somebody want to propose, uh, Ms. Connolly? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I mean, I understand wanting to save money and then uh, save people, you know, the, the time of having to be there. But I think we're sending the wrong message if it's normally, you know, nine to five on Saturday for an elect, a town election. If someone shows up at three o'clock and the door is locked, I don't know. It just, I get it, but, and I understand the whole issue of voting early. In fact, I'm sympathetic to that, but um, I, 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 I wouldn't, I think we should keep it to five. If that's what we normally do. Five, I believe is the shortest we've ever done. Yeah. Usually there's, you know, usually there's not a pandemic and usually, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and I, I understand the issue of predicting the turnout that it's gonna be low turnout for sure. There's nothing of, you know, major controversy, but 
Um, again, if one person, two people show up. Oh, and I've witnessed that. You know, I've been there when the polls closed. I mean, at the last election, yeah. I went to go see what the results were and people were like, I think it was five o'clock for Mr. Goodrich's election. And it wasn't five. And I went to the door at 501 and there were people like, ah. <laughs> uh, all right, so would somebody like to amend the hours and make a motion? It's on page, uh, whatever this is, 217 of our backup is the original. Thank you. Mike. <laughs> I move to set the poll hours for 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The annual town election to be held on Saturday, May 22nd, 2021 at the Situate High School Gymnasium located at 606 Chief Justice Cushing Highline. There's a motion by Mr. Goodrich. Is there a second? Second. A second by Ms. Connolly. Is there any further discussion? Um, I, because we still have lots of folks with us, is there anyone from the public that would like to comment? Raise your hand. I see none. Um, this motion requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Karn. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Motion carries 5-0 with apologies to Kathy Karn. <laughs> um, and is there, are we supposed to also vote on a warrant at this point? I don't know. You have to sign it, but sign uh, you'll need time to get it ready in the morning. Okay, okay. great. So we will remind everyone to, that there are signatures required. Okay, um, great. Um, so that moves us on to uh, boards and committee appointments. And the first is the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Board. Um, unfortunately, Kim Harriman, who was an outstanding contributor to the committee, had an um, um, uh, obligation that required her to step away. Um, and so that leaves a position open. And I will remind the board that we were overrun with exceptionally good um, candidates. And the determination is that because of, and we, we couldn't put everyone on the board because we only had so many slots. So rather than revisit and put out for applications in the normal process, um, we reached out to the two, um, two folks that sort of, we, we all voted and they were the next two that had the highest number of votes and that was uh, Mr. Um, George Taylor and Ms. Kate, is it Sloop? I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Well, uh, Swoop, sorry, Swoop, not Sloop. Yeah. Um, the, Mr. Taylor had four votes in the original and Ms. Swoop had three votes. And the reason that, and they're both, both um, uh, Lorraine spoke with both of them. They're both, both interested in, um, in joining the committee. Um, but I wanted to bring it to the board because they've got now a quarter of um, uh, of involved of work in um, and behind them, and that that both of these applicants had different strengths, and I wanted to just have a discussion about whether knowing both of their strengths, if one of them might fill a gap that um, Kim is now leaving. So um, I wanted to ask. Um, thank you, Mara, for joining us. I know it was hard for you tonight with your work obligations, but um, you've been sitting in on every single one of these meetings. So I wanted to just ask first if you would want to comment on where they are and where maybe they could use some reinforcements from the new applicant. Sure. Um, so where they are right now, I think, you know, after the presentation a couple of weeks back is, you know, they spent a lot of time on process, but they finally have gotten to a point where um, they have disseminated a survey to all the department heads, focusing first internally on the departments um, and identifying, having the department heads answer the survey with regards to the approach to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then the second phase of that will be to take that information and um, evaluate it and then go back and meet with a variety of the department heads. So I think the 
big, and then the second component I think where, where, where they will turn to next is a, how to reach out um, to the community and get feedback from them, right? On how, how we are performing, if you will, in, in areas and where they see improvement needed. In addition, the committee has also approved um, two sort of task force subcommittee extensions, one to look at um, the youth's opinion and how they can engage the youth. Um, and then the other one to look at different issues of, um, I, I hate, you know, hate crimes and uh, harassment, just, just from a different angle, I guess, to do some additional research on that. Um, so I think some of the concern that I've heard back feedback from the committee, various committee members is, you know, there's a lot of heavy lifting, there's a lot of work to do. So we just, I actually wish George and Kate joined tonight. I wish we kind of had asked them to come back in only because um, I think the committee would love doers and we want to make sure, you know, whoever we do uh, land on really takes an active part. It's not really just an advisory role at all. There's a lot of uh, hard work that needs to be done and a, a lot of work, you know, outside of the bi-weekly meetings. And that's true of all our committees, but sometimes some committees require a little bit more work than others. And um, this is one that has some heavy lifting. So um, the, the, many of the members on the existing committee have exceptional organizational skills. Um, so I don't think they lack there at all. Um, so I don't know how helpful that was. Um, I think it's important that we consider the charge, um, you know, for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, um, you know, as we just, you know, deliberate on this, just that's what I would ask folks to just consider as we kind of talk about, I think either candidate would be great. So again, you know, it's a good problem to have. I mean, we're back to where we were. It's like, honestly, we could have put everybody on the board because they were all, all yeah. the candidates. And I know that was about as helpful as nothing at 11 o'clock at night, but. No, it's good. So <laughs> I'll remind everyone. So George Taylor is, um, I think it's public administration professional. He's spent 30 years working with youth um, um, sports in town. And I think one of the reasons why he was the next highest vote getter was that that was a perspective that nobody else had really brought was that he actively has engaged with working with the kids in town. And one of the subcommittees DEI has put out is to do that, is to make sure we hear the kids' voice, all of that. Um, Kate Swoop is, um, has a, a different perspective. She comes from the social services background. Um, she is a parent um, in a, um, in a um, LGBTQ, I, I'll get all the initials wrong and, and I'll get slammed for it. But um, so she's, she's in, a, um, um, in a marriage that you know, she, in her letter to us, was concerned about how that might impact her child being accepted in town, um, because there is not a traditional uh, relationship. Um, and she has the social work background that was very attractive when we first went through the applications and, and a different perspective than a lot of the people in town. So they're both, as Maura said, I think, you know, just like the initial panel, I don't think we can make a bad choice. Um, they're both still interested. I think they've both been following what's been going on. Um, as to Maura's point about the heavy lift. Um, so we have the challenge of choosing one to fill Kim Har Harriman's great big shoes. Um, are there any comments or questions from the rest of the board? Quick, yeah. Quick question: Has more has either one of these been in attendance more or attended any of these meetings? Uh, not, not to my knowledge. Um, ha, it's hard to tell if just phone numbers are are right. dialed in, Andrew. So I, I mean, it, not from a a, a very um, visible aspect. I can't. I couldn't answer that. Right. They haven't right. participated. I, I know that. 
as far as, you know, vocally, but there's not a lot of that that takes place anyway. Right, right now. Right. And then there's also the Facebook Live factor. Somebody could flip on that. Yeah, know. people can be watching it on Facebook Live, Andrew, and I would have no idea. That's a great point. Yeah. Because I might sneak on Facebook them. Live, they don't really have an opportunity either to interact, right? They've got to go back into the whole Zoom. They've got to find I, was, I was hoping for, oh, yeah, one of them has been. Oh, I know. I know. Good, good question. Doesn't get to knock somebody out. Um, so uh, the original, the original vote, I, I've lost it now, but I think it was four votes for, um, oh, here we go. Four votes were cast for George. He was, and three for Kate. Um, and my concern was mostly just that we know more now. And um, Kim's expertise was in um, social work and organization. Is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, just uber organized and uber experienced in this. Kate on paper is much more of that slot. So she's, she's been in the social work world. She's you know done those sorts of things. We can't make a bad choice. George has a perspective of he's been in town a really long time and, and worked with all our kids. So um, who wants, anyone want to pull the trigger on this? <laughs> Mr. Vignani is thinking about it. Well, I, I voted for Kate the last time. I thought it was good to have you know, her representation on the committee, but four of you voted, for the, all of the, the rest of you voted for George and he, he'd be a great choice also. So um, I, I would still lean towards Kate because again, um, I think she brought another perspective to the committee. Well, and I, I honestly think that she's sort of filling the gap where Kim's left um, as much as I, I mean, I, I heartily supported George, but um, I don't. I don't know what. I want to know what's going to further our uh, accomplishment. Okay, Maura, pick one and let's go. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, Tony. But I I do agree with you <laughs> because I do think that Kate represents you know the gender uh, diversity that we need represented as well as the her um, experience working with uh, fair housing. Right, so that always comes up as an issue um, when we're talking about equity and equality. Um, and she's worked at Father's Bill, Father Bill. She's director of resident services currently for Peabody Properties. So she's got a lot of that type of property management and, um, experience, which I think will be helpful too from a certain aspect as we continue to look at all of our town services. So um, I'm happy to make a motion. To I'll make a motion. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. But, oh, I will defer to the vice chair to do that. <laughs> well, I didn't want to put the pressure on you unless Karen or Andrew have. I, I'm sorry, Ms. Karen, did you want to make a motion? <laughs> nope. I move to appoint Kate Swoop, <clears throat> Swoop, however you pronounce it, to the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee for a term of two years or until its successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law online. Training program is completed within 30 days. Moved by Second. Second. Ms. Karen, is there further discussion? Come on, let's talk about this. Um, if not seeing any, then um, we'll take a roll call vote. Maybe. Karen Canfield says aye. Ms. Canfield, sorry, <laughs> I was muted. That's okay. um, Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Karen? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you for participating in that. It's a very important committee and I wanted to have a discussion. Um, so the next is on the Board of Registrars. We have a reappointment um, based on the recommendation of the Chair of the Republican Town Committee. Was, is there any discussion about this matter? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Move to appoint William Francis as registrar for a term of three years or until successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law online training program is completed within 30 days. Moved by Mr. Mignani, is there a second? Republicans, second. okay, Ms. Curran. <laughs> um, is there any further discussion? Stop yawning. Uh, the, uh, this requires a roll call vote. 
Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Bignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries 5-0. The last is for situate housing. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm on the wrong page here. Is the, uh, we interviewed uh, candidates. We decided that we would wait until 5-11 to vote on the situate housing tenant board member so that the folks can have an opportunity to talk about what that actually will require of them. So that one we don't vote on. That brings us to a discussion vote on the one day malt, wine and malt licenses. Um, are there any questions or concerns about these particular applications? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Will the Board of Selectmen approve a one day wine and malt license to Fork in the Road for an event at Citrup Maritime Center on May 1st, 2021 from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m.? and Ella McKenzie for an event at Citroën Maritime Center on May 2nd, 2021 from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. And Michael Aprea for an event at the Citroën Maritime Center on May 8th, 2021 from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Motion by Mr. Vignani, is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Conley. Seeing no further discussion, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Karn? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motions carry uh, 5 0. Um, so we have already talked about liaison reports, correspondence, and we've approved our minutes. Look how much time we've caught up on. Um, we are not adjourning to sign documents because we have an executive session. And I'm trying to find, I know Lorraine very helpfully brought us a, brought me the revised, oh crap, um, motion that has to be made, which of course I cannot find right now. Um, oh darn it, I'm you sorry. It. <laughs> it was a sec, it was a second, um, it was an individual email kind of thing. Um, hmm. um, Okay. It's that it's it's the one um, at five thirty four p.m. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. And then just open it, and it's down on this. Just page down a little bit. You don't even have to open it. I too have much. a five thirty four p.m. Could you move it? Make the motion, and I will. Um, I have the, you have to do the chair declares, right? I know the chair declares a whole bunch of stuff that I can't. I don't have in front of me, so. Um, would you, if you like me to read it for you, Karen? It. I can you want read. Me to read it for you. Yes, that's what I, yes, please. Okay, the chair declares that the select board move into executive session pursuant to purpose three of the open meeting law to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. And the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the select board in connection with this matter. The board will not reconvene an open session. The subject is the aquaculture pilot program. So moved. Or do I say that or what she said? <laughs> you said, I declare. You I declare as stated. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'll um, make a motion. I now make that. a motion. Thank you. All right. Move that the select board go into executive session pursuant to purpose three of the open meeting law to discuss strategy with respect to litigation of an open meeting law it may have, have a detrimental effect on the Litigating position of the public body, the board will not reconvene an open session, the subject matter being the aquaculture pilot program, and this requires a roll call vote. Uh, moved by Ms. Kern, seconded by. I'll second it. it. Just name the topic. I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> moved by uh, Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Thank you very much. The motion carries. We will now convene an executive session. Um, and we thank everyone for staying up with us. <laughs>